Thank you for coming. It's a very important assignment. I called my most important panther. Would you like an important beverage? I won't lie to you, Panzer. This mission could involve danger. Dangerous danger? Quite possibly. There's no glory in this mission, Panzer. The work will require work. The hours will each be at least an hour long. The nights will be dark. I'm not afraid of the dark, Inspector. I thought you knew that. You'll be dealing with some of the most influential individuals in politics and world affairs. None of them over eleven. What was that last part? They are young. They are young. They are children. But not just any children. Some are the sons and daughters of diplomats and prime ministers. Others are political activists, environmentalists, humanitarians, or simply very, very cute. But they all share one thing in common. Yeah? What's that? They are smart. Very, very smart. You don't say. I believe the children are the future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. What a unique perspective. These children are at high risk for acts of terrorism. Your mission is to watch over them, protect them, see them home safely. Babysit. Baby nothing! This is as much about foreign relations as it is about summer camp. Summer camp? You're sending me to a summer camp? Not just any summer camp, you oblivious gargoyle. Camp Chilliwawa! Chili who -wa? Wawa! Wawa! Don't get so upset, Inspector. If anything goes wrong, if the children are the least bit unhappy, their influential parents will go nutso. Their countries will be outraged. World peace down the drain. Oh, it could fuel the next world war, for crying out loud. There's not a moment to waste. The children arrive in Chilliwawa today. They have each been given a private jet for transport. Well, point me to my jet and I'm out of here. Small problem. We are run out of jets. No biggie. I'm a pretty resourceful cat. Just tell me where the place is. I'll find my own way there. I'm afraid the location is top secret. No one is to know where Chilliwawa lies. Not even you. I see. So how would you propose I get there? I'll have to magically zap you. Magically zap me? Oh, no way! I hate that! Look, last time it took me like three days to recuperate. My fur was all dried out, I had cotton mouth, I can't stand being magically zapped. I won't do it. I can't. I just need to make sure there's enough distance between us. You owe me for this. You owe me big time. We, oui, we, oui, we. Oui. The most spectacular summer camp ever! I think I'm gonna throw up. Hey! I get motion sickness. I like my feet planted firmly on the ground, thank you very much. If God intended for me to fly, he would have given me wings. But... I mean big metal wings, like an airplane! Pink Panther, welcome to Camp Chiliwawa, home to the first annual kids conference. Children from all over the world will meet here to discuss how to promote world peace. Yes, I heard. It's a wonderful program. Have you met any of our multicultural, ethnically diverse, but all equally gifted campers? 
Not yet. Well, please do. Feel free to look around. We're glad to have you aboard. Saucy wrench. Smarty? Pink? It's your old friend Von Smarty stuck in here! Sorry, Smarty. Let me try to get you out. You're stuck. Don't panic. I'll figure something out. I told you I'd get you out. Thank goodness! It's been too long, my friend! Too, too long! I had no idea you would be here. Of course! I had to turn this place into a little person's wonderland. Wait till you see my outrageous inventions. The Super Sock is just one. Would you mind depositing these items back where they belong? Don't you want to help me, Pink? Well done, Pink! I'm so glad to have you around! Did you see the airboards? I made those too! Did you see my dial -a day No, what is it? One of my best inventions yet! You select a season, a time of day, and presto! Crisp winter morning! It's not even cold! Isn't it wonderful? Let me try! It's sensational! Terrific! Oh, by the way, this is the code that will help you get into the supply shed! What was that you just whispered? I said Chili Wawa success has gone to my head! It's a great success indeed! Don't open the champagne just yet. I'm from the Better Camping Bureau. The BCB, run! <laughs> My staff and I are here to evaluate your program. Make sure the children are well supervised and happy. See that all your equipment meets all rigid safety standards. <laughs> Here are some pogo shoes. Pogo shoes? Pogo shoes, yeah! I see. Pogo shoes. How nice. Mind if my men take a look at those? Make sure you set the dial to a beginner. Beginner? Forget it, men. Crank them up. Show me what you got. If you say so. <laughs> Those look fine, but I'm warning you, one slip-up and I'll shut this place down before you can say... Where's Louie? Where's Louie? Well, we'll consider ourselves warned. Don't get smart, Panther. I can't stand a smart Panther. You, you prefer a dumb Panther, boss? Sh shut it. Please, boss, I, I didn't do nothing. What else is there to inspect? 
Have you seen the airboards? What's an airboard? L like a skateboard that flies. Maximum weight capacity. <laughs> that thing seems to work nicely. S say, what's in that shed? Oh, supplies, but it's locked right now, and I haven't found the code to open it. No code to open it! Well, you're off to a crummy start. <laughs> I guess we better go find Louie. But we'll be back! <laughs> That guy's gonna be trouble. That was smart thinking, Pink. I'm going in my cabin to read up on the Better Camping Bureau policies. If you need me, just knock. G good thinking. I myself will take this time to do a deep cleansing Kiwi Citrus mask. My skin is horrific. I'll be in my cabin too if you need me, Pink. Okay, fellas. But don't worry. I'll be fine. I can always make time for some fishing. Oh, hello. What's your name? My name is Nigel. I'm from England. I'm a pacifist. P-A-C-I-F-I-S-T. -I, I am very T-I-D-Y and most everything with love and R-E-S-P-E-C-T. This is my first time at camp. No roughhousing, please. Do you like fishing? Does it kill the fish? We won't kill them. We'll throw them back. But it must hurt a little when you snag them on the hook. I suppose it hurts a little, but just a drop. Like a teeny tiny eeny weeny little pinch. Ow, ow, ow! That hurts! What did I ever do to you? Eeny weeny, eh? I'm sorry. How would you like it if I hooked one of them things around the roof of your mouth, buddy? I'll never fish again. Then mend your ways, warmonger. Deliver your stick of doom into my hands, and I will see that no one is ever hurt by its E-B-I-L again. Stick of doom? The fishing rod. Oh, of course. Hi, my name is Chioni, and I'm from Egypt. My name means Daughter of the Nile. I like anything fast. My father is an ambassador, his name is Adolfo. I can write in hieroglyphics. Really? My name's Pink. What does your name mean? It means light red. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. Chili Wawa? What's your name? That's Young Lee, a very gifted student from Beijing. Of course, no more or less gifted than any other gifted students. You understand. Excuse me. Neato. I sure wish I had some way of finding out more about this. I wonder what the story is behind this thing.
I sure wish I had some way of finding out more about this. Neato! I wonder what the story is behind this thing. The kitties all brought such interesting stuff. I wonder what the story is behind this thing. I sure wish I had some way of finding out more about this. Neato! I wonder what the story is behind this thing. Neato! I sure wish I had some way of finding out more about this. I wonder what the story is behind this thing. Neato! I sure wish I had some way of finding out more about this. The kitties all brought such interesting stuff. Neato! I sure wish I had some way of finding out more about this. Do you know where Bhutan is? That's where I am from. I'm a Buddhist, and I spent time as a monk in a monastery. I have pen pals from all over the world, and now I will have some more. My name is Indrani, and I'm an independent Indian woman, okay? I believe women should be treated as equals, and I will fight so that my daughters can live with respect. I am a Hindu, and I love Hindu mythology. My name, Indrani, means goddess of the sky. My name is Kumokin. I am a native Australian. Though I am only 10, in my village, I am considered a doctor of herbal medicine. I know all about nature. My totem is a crocodile. Interesting. Though that's not how we do it in my country. Yeah, I'd like to visit your country someday. I insist you stay with my family when you do. Didn't the day go quickly? Bedtime, unique and lovable campers. Bedtime, don't forget our Introduction to Foreign Culture Seminar first thing in the morning. Good night, Kamokin. See you in the morning, Nigel. Pleasant dreams, Ananda. Sleep tight, Chione. <laughs> Stop giggling, young Lee. Nighty night, Pink Panther! Don't let the bed box bite, mine, Kinda! Good night, John boy.
this wasn't here yesterday. Dear Pink, come quick! Nigel is in a terrible state! You can see he's very agitated! Agitated! A-G-I-tated! Agitated! Nigel? What's got you so upset? Be quiet! I hate you! I hate this place! It's a rotten dump! Oh, you couldn't possibly be! Be quiet! I want to go home to England! England rules! I can't stand it here! It's a rotten dump! A dump! You hear me? R-O-T-T! Close enough. Your next word is hyperbole. Hyperbole! A-H-Y-P-E-uh-boly! Hyperbole! Now leave me alone! I hate you! I wanna go home! I wanna go home! I wanna go! Home? That's right! I hate it here! I wanna go home! Call my bloody parents! What do you think is wrong with him? Well, his spelling seems a little skittish for one. But pink! I wanna go home! I wanna go home! I wanna go! Home? That's right! We must do something! Your brother Camping Bureau will shut us down! He wants to go home! If you can't bring Mohammed to the mountain... Can't we worry about Mohammed after we've taken care of Nigel? I'll hot-foot it over to England and snatch up a few of his favorite things from home. Nigel will be happy as a clam. I hate it here. I want to go home. I'll be in my cabin. See me before you leave. I want to give you a little something for your trip. Pink Panzer, I've made you a special travel device. Travel device? Not just any device, your very own PDA. Your PDA is small, your PDA is pink, it's your pink digital assistant. Come again? It allows us to communicate and teaches you about the places you'll be traveling to on your trip to exciting London, England. How much would you pay for a digital assistant like this? I've never had a digital assistant. $200? $300? Today it's yours free! Free! With your PDA, you will know things you didn't even know you knew. Your PDA can tell you about any country you visit. You can manipulate the PDA with the control panel along the bottom and the arrows around the wheel. It's easy to navigate through the PDA. Click on the arrows to select the country you want information about. Click on the arrows to select the topic you want information about. Click on the go arrow and faster than you can say, I'll have the fat-free vinaigrette, you'll arrive at the domain page hosted by a colorful character. Fact pages supplies the real learning power of the PDA, the kind of stuff most folks just won't know. Now, anytime you right-click an object, you hear a little tidbit of information about it. But when you see a PDA icon flash at the bottom left-hand corner of the page, you can click on it to go directly to a fact page. So much information, sheesh! I hope you have robe in your head. I tell you, it's the hottest thing since sliced bread, Pink. No lie! I want to go home. I don't like children from other countries. Indrani, is there anything I can do to make you feel better? Come a little closer. <laughs> I guess I feel better now, sucker. She's changed. You're not planning on walking to England, are you?
take your seat and fasten your seatbelt. The aircraft will be moving shortly. We're next on the runway to take off. If you'll make sure your seat belts are fastened, we'll be on our way promptly. Hello, Pink Panther, and thank you for flying Air Smarty. We'll be cruising at an altitude of 42,000 feet today. Once we finish our climb, you can remove your seatbelt and move freely about the cabin. Would you like to see our in-flight movie today? What are you showing? Sister Act 16. You gonna buy something or not? Sir Boldly is Parliament's oldest member. Today he is retiring. I'm afraid he's in the midst of delivering a rather long-winded farewell speech. I do wish he'd cut it short. <coughs> Seen our ball, Panther? And furthermore, it has been brought to my attention that... Unless you've got a way to divert him, you'd better just wait. Is this the ball you're looking for? Yeah, that's it. I need me lucky ball. I'm the team hooker. The beg pardon? Team what say? He's the team hooker. I'm the captain. We're training for the World Cup. I see. It's just you said. And I thought... To forget it. Bet you anything we'd have lost if I didn't get me lucky ball back. Let me do something to repay you. Wow. Right, well, I'm a bit parky. Let's go. How much is the sun? Is that Ryan Boar's jersey? I guess it is. I don't bloody believe it! Ryan Boar! Me lad idolizes the bloke! Uh, can I trade you for a copy of the sun? Right, you can, mate! Here, take a little something extra, too. Ryan Boar's jersey, fancy that! Love, quite the best. Nah, I'm a cartoon character. I don't drink. Hunt mile for the Bobby. Pick up. Got my drink. Brilliant. I'm off duty now. Pint and a plowman's for the postman. Pick up. I eat this lunch every blooming day, but you think they'd call it the postman's lunch? No! Steak and a kidney pie and a pink gin for our barrister friend. Pick it up! So, you're the barrister, eh? Working on a case? 
How's it coming? If I were working on a case, and I'm not saying I am, I certainly wouldn't be at liberty to discuss how near victory I am or am not. What you got there? Bangers and mash! Bangers and mash? It's what we call sausage and mashed potatoes. Oh, I see. Where's more bangers and mash, Missy? I ordered mine before that little perisher did his. Say, would you mind terribly if I uh, borrowed one of those bangers there? What's in it for me? That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> How about trading one of your sausages for a comic book? Okay! Don't you have any football over here? Of course we do! Excuse me? That's not football. It's a ball game played with your foots. Football! That game is not called football! Right then, what is it? Soccer! Soccer! Oh, brother. Bangers and mash? Bangers and mash? She's never looked better since she left him. He's never looked worse. Listening in, are you? It's not polite to eavesdrop. It's not polite to gossip, either. We're not gossiping, we're updating each other on current events. Yeah, and if you haven't got any current events, you better scram. Has it that the Queen was seen out celebrating her birthday in a disco, wearing a rhinestone bustier and doing the electric slide? Pull up a chair, Panther. Things are just getting good. Word is, a woman that we all know very well has fallen in love with a member of Parliament. I don't believe it! Love at your age! Who is the lucky MP? Sir Boldly, I've confessed my love in a letter, and I want you all to hear it. <clears throat> my dearest Boldly, I love you as I have loved no other hairless man in my life. What's this? An urgent note for Sir Boldly? Give it here, lad. Loves me? She, she loves me? I'm enclosing a see you later alligator and such and so forth, blah blah blah. She loves me? She loves me? Having a bad day? My best friend Nigel's away this summer. I haven't got a thing to do. I'm frighteningly bored. So where is this, Nigel? Some special Kemp chili something or other. Who cares? 
It's a silly place anyways. Well, I'm sure it's not so bad. It's a rotten dump, trust me. Me and Nigel hate it. And we hate school, too. Nigel does not hate school. I know that, Fora. Trust me, we hate everything. Okay, so your buddy Nigel is stuck in a rotten dump. What do you think we could do to cheer him up? Hmm, let's see. Sorry I'm late. Had a little matter to tend to in the loo. Bubble and squeak gets you every time. Come on then, Rupert. Wait, what about Nigel? See his butler! His name's Jackson! At the Mucky Duck! So, Jackson is his name. Guess I better go visit the Mucky Duck again. Uh, game of darts? Without play with strangers, my mate, me. I'm no stranger. No stranger than you are. Oh, we got a bloody comedian on our hands here. That tall pink comedian with a tail. Look here. You don't know my name, but I don't know your name. You don't know his name, and he don't know yours. However, he knows my name, and I bloody well know his. And that, my friend, makes you the stranger. Ha <laughs> ha! Aren't you Jackson? Indeed I am, sir. My full name is Michael Cuthbert Jackson, but please, don't ask me to do Billy Jean. I wouldn't. I'm partial to beat it myself. Who's next? I am. You play darts? You watch and see if I don't. Just... Thanks, Jackson. Does Nigel like darts too? Nigel? How do you know Nigel? I'm a friend of his from Camp Chilliwawa. Is something wrong with Master Nigel? He hasn't been hurt, has he? No, nothing like that. I just thought I'd bring him a little something from England. He's a bit homesick. Homesick? Can you think of anything he might want? Well, he's a guy, I suppose. His... Guy? Is Guy Fawkes toy? It was the 5th of November, 1605. Man King James was mighty lucky just to be alive. The Roman Catholics were displeased with his dealings. I guess you could say they had more than her feelings. Gunpowder was planted in Parliament's cellar. Thirty barrels were Enough to really damage a fella. They plan to blow up James and Parliament too. I guess they couldn't think of nothing better to do. Oh, mammy! Guy Fawkes was in charge of the explosion. Bit before the Big Bang came. One moral chap warned a friend to beware. And before Fawkes knew it, we'd caught wind. And your point is... Remember, remember the 5th of November. On that day, children burn a likeness of Gay Fawkes. And you're telling me this because... Nigel's Guy Fawkes. He never can bring himself to properly burn it. It's a bit singed round the edges, maybe, but that's it. Actually, he's rather fond of it. I think he keeps it hidden because he's embarrassed. That's the sweetest thing I've ever heard. I'll deliver his guy to him safely. Where does he keep it? I told you. I think he keeps it hidden. 
because of this embarrassment thingy. Eden? Eden! You must have some idea of where I could look. His family's country seat, I suppose. You could search there. Will you take me? For Master Nigel, I do anything. I'm on duty now, Pink. As Ed Butler, we mustn't seem too familiar. What do you... Oh, Jackson! Excuse me? Hello, Penfo. What's your rush? Talk to me or I won't hush. Didn't you just feel a drizzle? I hope it don't mess up me whistle. I'm on my way to meet me mates. I guess I better move me plates. I'm so chipper today, I feel I could float. I'm sure you can tell by the grin on my boat. What on earth are you talking about? My gibberish has a well-planned code. To crack it, you must change your mode. I'm sure you're smart. Why, you're no oaf. Yes, you're the sort to use your loaf. Now answer, Panther. Don't stand mute. Are you looking for a whistle and flute? Whistle and what? Crack my rhymes and sing my song. Then I'll quickly move along. If you're undressed, you've no whistle and flute. That'd mean you'd be in your birthday. Well done! So whistle and flute means suit, as you said. What word do I mean when I say loaf of bread? To run a race or cross a street, I'd need to use my plates of meat. What do I mean by plates of meat? I have two of them. They are my... You're getting the hang. You're catching right on. Answer my last question and I'll move along. A grimace, a frown, a look of distaste. These expressions all rest on a person's boat race. What do I mean by boat race? Congratulations, kind lad. You did it quite well. It didn't take long and you proved you can spell. Now repeat plain to me what I rhyme to you. To prove you've the hang, then I promise we're through. Didn't you just feel a drizzle? I hope it don't mess up me whistle. I'm on my way to meet me mates. I guess I better move me plates. I'm so chipper today, I feel I could float. I'm sure you can tell by the grin on my boat. You hope the rain won't mess your suit. That's what you mean by whistle. You'll need your feet to meet your mates. That's what you mean when you say plates. You've a grin on your boat, and on mine I've distaste. When you say boat, you mean one's face. You've done me proud. I could almost cry. So long, farewell, ta-ta, bye bye This is not where the chambermaid would enter. As chambermaid, you're expected to make the beds, draw the curtains, fill the hot water bottles, lay the fire, and turn down the bedspread in the evening. Surely good fun indeed. As cook, you are second only to me. Your duties include preparing all meals and, when we are short-staffed, serving and cleaning up. The footmen stand by the door to greet visitors and carry parcels. Enjoy. Don't be surprised if we call you in to help serve or clean up. 
It's all part of the glory. Pinkington for Nigel's father. Lord Pinkington for Sir Manly. Right this way, please. My goodness. Manly, is that you? I'm sorry. How long has it been, Manly? I was just riding past your lovely house, and I thought I'd say, hello. Very good of you to pop in. Uh... Pinkford. Pinkford? Pinkford Pinkington, but you can just call me... Pink? You remembered. Do you want me for a dish of tea, Pink? Why, I couldn't decline if I said no. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. I've brought your tea. Would you like a spot? A spot and a half. I'm quite thirsty. One lump or two, Lord Pinkington. Uh, no lump is fine. No lump? A piece of lemon, then. Or some milk. I take my tea just plain brown, thanks. Brown? Your tea is brown, isn't it? It's an Earl Grey today, your lordship. I suppose Grey will do. Pour it up, good man. <coughs> the afternoon post, sir. Leave it on my desk, Jackson. That will be all. We with the meat this morning, Pinkford? What some people call recreation? Sheesh! I could find a better way to spend my afternoon than chasing one of them around! Uh, no, I'm a vegetarian. Yes. Well, I have to get back. It's still going on. Slippery little bugger. Will you dine with us tonight? I'd be delighted. Brilliant! Loosen your belt, old friend. I think if I heard cook right, we're having roast beef in Yorkshire. Splendid! Consider my belt loosened. I really must go. Ah, one of the most beautiful sights indeed. Midsummer. The sun rises directly over the eel stone at Stonehenge. It's quite beautiful to watch. What's up, Bishop? Sir Manley's great-great-grandmother. Actually, hanging a bit crooked. But then, so was she. Ah, the family crest. Very regal indeed. Each quarter so intricate and telling. Nigel rather fancied the upper left quarter with that merry little unicorn. Before it was framed, it sat draped on the chair. Nigel used to stroke the unicorn for hours. Uh, you can see it's a bit threadbare. Poker. Caressed marks the spot. Pretty sneaky, Nigel. Mr. Guy Fox, I presume.
Wouldn't want any bad luck. Guess I better pick up that mirror. Wow! The only crest in my family was on my toothbrush. Sure wish I could visit. I can't split now. There's work to do. Ah, that must be where Nigel gets his dashing good looks. Caressed marks the spot. My intuition tells me I am overlooking something. Wow, the only crest in my family was on my toothbrush. Bills, bills, junk mail. I may already be a millionaire. What's this? Dear Mummy and Fafa, I hate camp. I am miserable and I want to come home. Please come and get me your sad son, Nigel. Okay, oh, oh, who am I? Duh, I'll save the day, I can do anything, and I'm so great in pain. Okay, okay, my turn, man. Uh, who am I? Uh, hi, Von Schmidty. Uh, can I help you with any problems? Uh, can I fix anything? Uh, 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 good one, good one. Uh, 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 not now me. Real funny, wise guys. Did, did, did you hear something, Louie? Relax, man. It was, uh, probably the wind, man. Don't be such a scaredy cat, man. Ah! Oh! That's evil looking, Louie. My shades, man! Louie, I didn't do nothing. Talk to me, babe. We've got big trouble! Surely the little girl from Egypt is very upset. She said she hates camp. She ran off a few hours ago with one of the airboards. I'm afraid she might try to journey home. We searched everywhere and can't find her. I'll cover the campgrounds again. You better fly to Egypt. Where in Egypt should I look? Well, her name Chioni means daughter of the Nile. Check along the river for her. Along the river? 
The Nile is 4,163 miles long. Yeah, so you better get started. I'll send her jet. Hold on a sec while I upgrade the PDA's database to include Egyptian history and travel information. Okay, you're cool. today? Sure. In just a few minutes, we'll be arriving right outside of Giza. The weather conditions are hot and hot. Alan Wasalan, welcome to Egypt. See the view of the pyramids. One of the seven wonders of the world, you know. I need to find the mouth of the Nile. Lucy will tell you that's me. Get the camels here! The only way to get away is sun too hot to walk, my friends. Try a four-legged companion. I'm crazy! I'm the mouth of the Nile and I will make a nice deal for you. Today only. That's very funny. I'm looking for a girl. Aren't we all, my friend? Aren't we all? Bring her a souvenir. She will never forget you. How about this one? <coughs> My panther went to Egypt and all he brought me was this crummy t-shirt. Yikes! What's that? Probably a sand mummy. A sand mummy? Don't you know anything about mummification? Now the ancient Egyptians had a way to preserve a body for the afterlife. Embalming a body was the way to begin And for that you need a ritual nerve Some mummies are mummified with a procedure called embalming. That's what the ancient Egyptians did. But there are other kinds of naturally preserved mummies, like sand mummies. 
So, if you just drop a body in the sand, it mummifies naturally? Yep. Yeesh. Technically, any dead body that still has skin on it is a mummy. Where did you learn so much about this? From my mummy. Thanks for the lesson, Mouth. I guess I better get out of here before I mummify. Could I borrow one of your camels? I need to get to the banks of the Nile. Not for nothing you can't. The camel ride will cost you. I'm a businessman. I live to sell. I sell to live. I have a three-legged pony to provide for. And I haven't even had lunch today. I'm crazy. Well, fine. I'll just find my own way there. Who loves the tourist, baby? Mouth does. Make a nice deal today only. The heat must have got me. Stop me, Lucy. I'm crazy. Kebab? No, Pink Panther, but if I run into Kebab, I'll tell him you're looking for him. Funny, funny. Try Kebab, lamb or beef, tahini or no? I don't have any money. But you have a lovely pink smile, and my heart cannot say no. Say, why don't we partner? You get me, say, a rug, and I'll give you the grub. I'll see what I can do. Do you know a girl named Chione? No. Ask the owner. He knows everyone. Do you know a girl named Chione? Strombone? Crazy one-eyed Strombone? Please, sit and have coffee with me. Tell me your story about Strombone. Crazy Strombone. It's been years. Ziada, Masputa, or Sada? Sorry? Sweet, medium, or bitter? Sweet, medium, or bitter what? Coffee! How do you like it? Sweet, medium, or bitter? Oh, uh, sweet. Ziada, two! Decaf, if you have. So tell me, when did you first meet Strombone? Who is this a funny story? Okay, Strombone and I first met, I think it was... Actually, I haven't really met Stromboni per se. I mean, I have heard stories about Stromboni, but this is gonna be our first real meeting meeting. You know what I mean? So you don't know Stromboni? No, no! Who do any of us really know? I know Stromboni! Well, I think you misunderstood me. I said I was looking for Chione. I don't know her. That's okay. Well, thanks for the coffee. Zia delicious! Should we send Chioni a little care package? Maybe a piece of jewelry? The director of Camp Frilly Cha Cha asked us not to send anything other than letters. We could send it in a letter. Your daughter is away at camp? Yeah, she's away. Thank goodness. She is a handful. She's two handfuls. Always boating to a farming village in Upper Egypt. No matter how many times I ask her not to bother people working. It's the sake she loves. Always begging to drive the ox. It's no way for a little girl to behave. Have you heard from her? I mean, is she enjoying herself at camp? We expect to hear from her today. I see. Well, uh, best of luck. I hope she's having fun. Assalamu alaikum. Colorful carpet, not too dusty. Does it fly? That cost extra. Well, it's not for me, it's for a friend. Ooh. The kebab vendor. Oh, Fatouche. He's been trying to get a rug to sit on for weeks. You tell Fatouche he can have that rug for that cup of coffee he was supposed to treat me to. Fresh coffee from Fatouche? Sensational! What kind of rug would Tushi like? I have every style, every shape, every fabric, every size, everything! Everything? Absolutely everything! Okay, um, how about a pink panther skin rug? <coughs> hey, hey! Hmm? What? It's synthetic! This may sound like a silly question, but... Do I have a magic lamp? You just saw Aladdin, and you're looking for your very own genie, complete with a name voice talent. 
Welcome to reality. There's no three wishes. There's no Robbie Williams. There's plain brass pots and hot stun. What can I get you? Uh, nothing. Thanks. Cynic. Well, here's your rug. I hope you like it. And now for your grub. Oh, when the rug vendor says he'll buy you a cup of coffee next. I've got a kebab. Ten kebab. Uh, eight kebab. I only have one. Seven kebabs. I only have one. Six kebabs, my final offer. I only have one. Sold. You drive a hard bargain, Panther. You're lucky. I'm hypoglycemic. Give me the grub. <coughs> oh. Okay, that was somewhat delicious. Now get me a rug. And we'll be on our way. A uh, rug? My camel's hump has been sitting in the hot sun all day. You can't expect me to ride on it bare. Maasal salama, Pink. That means so long. Who loves the tourist, baby? Mouth does make a nice deal today only. The heat must have got me. Stop me, Lucy. I'm crazy. Rugs! 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 Remember that rug I gave you? Yes. Truth be told, it kind of gives me the creeps. Well, I'd be happy to take it off your hands. He wants it back, does he? Just as soon as he buys me the coffee he promised. Any chance I can bother you for another rug? Did Fatou send you? Tell him he gets one rug only. That's all. And by the way, this coffee is lukewarm. Here's your coffee. I hope you like it, Ziada. I do. You wanted food, I brought you food. You wanted a rug, I brought you a rug. Creepy. I've done everything you've asked. Now would you please help me get to the banks of the Nile? Absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. Just as soon as I quench my raging thirst. Oh, brother. Parched. Like a piece of old paper. Drier than my mother-in-law's rump roast. My throat is the desert. The desert is my throat. I am no one until my insatiable thirst is quenched.
I'm about to try it now. <laughs> it's lukewarm. Hello. What's your name? Cuckoo. Cuckoo? It means rooster. Don't ask. What are you doing? I ask myself that every day. What are you doing, Cuckoo? What are you doing? Do you think for one minute I thought I would spend my life working with the Zabaline collecting trash? I had dreams. I had aspirations. I could have been a contender for crying out loud. Are you dating anyone? I have a friend you might like. Her name is Lucy. Lucy? Lucy? Three-legged Lucy? <laughs> She's the apple of my eye, the spring in my step, the hay in my barrel, the trash in my cart. I'm Coco for Lucy, you hear me? I love that horse. <sighs> if you see her, tell her I said hi. What's with the, uh, three legs? She cut herself, shaving. But I tell you, that one leg in the front is like iron. <coughs> liquid, lovely liquid. <coughs> ah, just the way I like it. Lukewarm. It won't be long now, my friends, until we all drink from the banks of the Nile! Hurrah! And now, Panther, please, some food for my Lucy. I don't have any food. I gave you what I had. You ate it! No provisions for my Lucy? After such a long journey? I'm afraid we must terminate our relationship with you. I'm sorry, don't talk to us anymore. Mouth, please! Did you hear something, Lucy? I heard nothing. I'm not listening to you. <laughs> Oh, hello. I was going to take a dip, but I'll check back later. <laughs> Have you seen a little girl about so high? Dark hair? Yes, I have. <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> I see. Are you making a boat? Yes, I am. Out of papyrus reeds. <laughs> I really need to travel further into Upper Egypt. Can I borrow your boat? No, my panther. You've got to get your own. Or hitch a ride with them. <laughs> oh, what's funny? Nothing. Lucy, it's our friend, the Frugal Panther. Mouth, you don't understand. No, no, you don't understand. You think Lucy's three-legged life isn't hard enough. She has low self-esteem, premature hair loss, an absentee father. Lucy, I... <laughs>
I guess it's back to Cairo. Why so sad, my friend? My friend Mouth is mad at me. Ah, you know Mouth? Do me a favor. When you see Mouth, give him this. What's this? The Eye of Horus. Protects you from evil spells. He's been waiting for one. I had it on back order. Now tell me, what can I do for you? I think you may have just saved a little girl's life. Thanks. Probably won't make a difference to you, but this is from Fadil. The Eye of Horus. I've been waiting for this baby. Increases your sales drive. Humph! Okay, Lucy, you can wear it. Thanks for delivering that. Here's a little scarab for your troubles. And now, Panther, please, some food for my Lucy. I guess it's back to Cairo. Oh, I was hoping I'd see you again. If you see Lucy, will you give her these? Thanks, Cuckoo. I bet she'll really like them. Lucy, I know you're mad, but I know something that might cheer you up. Do you know a donkey named Cuckoo? Well, he's Cuckoo over you. He gave me these flowers for you. Lucy, won't you help me get out to that boat? A little girl may be in danger. Okay, let's get this crazy guy out to that fishing boat. And I'll give you one good leg, Lucy. Use it. Mind if I hitch a ride with you? Not at all! Welcome aboard my fishing felucca. We're headed further into Upper Egypt towards the farming villages. Ha ha! Perfection! Bye, Mouth! Bye, Lucy! A date palm tree. 
Wow, I haven't had a date in years, and I always thought I was rather attractive. Chione? I'm sorry, I thought you were... Want to turn, Misaki? Oh no, I was just looking for someone. The little buckets dump water into the ditch. We use it to irritate the farm. Oh, so you're in charge of irritating the farm. Not irritate, irrigate. I see, that's just swell. Say, do you know a little girl named Chione? So, you do know her. Has she been here? Who are you? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to trespass. Is this your farm? Are you a farmer? It is my farm, and I am a farmer. I also happen to sit on the People's Assembly, Egypt's legislative body. I'm an Aries. I enjoy water skin and mint gum. I'm looking for a little girl named Chione. I'm looking for someone to feed my birds. But you don't see me burdening you with my problems. Get it? Burdening. I am a lonely water bird. I'm the size of a chicken. I'm a purple gallinule with loads of ambition. Thank you very much. I'm a black winged kite. I make my home chilling by the Nile. The other birds flock around me trying to bite off a piece of my style. I'm a Pied Kingfisher. I dive into the Nile's water to catch my prey. I am an excellent provider, but the chicks still run away. Thank you kindly. Now I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about Chioni. Have you seen her? No. Do you know where she might be? No. Can you think of anyone that might be able to help me? Well, no. Thanks. You've been very helpful. Really? No. You're in such hot water, man! It's like you soap. Huh? You know, because of the hot water and all. You're digging your own grave, Panther! You're, uh, trying to, like, uh, tempt me with the salad, man? Is that what's going on? No, Molly, it's so dangerous! Just cause you know I'm, like, really, really hungry, man? Step away from the salad, boy! I gotta get it, man! I'm starving! No! Perfectly good salad gone to waste. The most impressive use of a salad I've ever seen. Hmm, that's strange. We don't usually see many pigeons along the Nile. Hey! 
Hey, what are you doing here? I came to deliver a message. How did you get all the way to Egypt? How do you think I got here? I flew for crying out loud. I am a bird. Sheesh. But I thought you were afraid of... Hello? Not in front of the foreign feathers, if you don't mind. Heavens to Purdue, what in Frank's name is that thing? You are huge! I am a purple gallinule. I am a water bird. You look more like a turkey to me, honey. You are truly massive. So, what's the message you came to deliver? You know, you have no tact. Did anyone ever tell you that? Sheesh, I mean, come on! How about a little privacy already? Forgive my friend, would you mind excusing us? Not at all. Tell the bird to keep in mind. Pigeon is a delicacy in Egypt. I do not like her. I just don't. Please, what is the message about? Dear little Shioni, is she a love? I found this by the lake. She must have meant to mail it to her parents. I figured I'd do a good deed and bring it over for her. Von Schmarty told me she was so miserable at camp, she ran away. You don't say. Maybe this note has some information on her whereabouts. Let me see it. Not so fast, Pink Puff. I'm sure you must have picked up a little bubble along the way for me. Something so I know I'm loved. I am loved, aren't I? Oh no, it's in hieroglyphics! What are you gonna do? I'll try to find someone who can help decode this, I suppose. I can decode it for you. It says... I... Am... Happy. She's having fun! Fun? That doesn't make any sense. Von Schmarty said she was miserable. I better get back to that camp. Wait, you better take this! Thanks. Pink to Schmarty. Come in, Schmarty. Pink, I found Chione. She came back to camp. And she's happy, right? No, she's more unhappy than ever. More unhappy than ever? This doesn't make sense. I'll need jet transport back to Camp Chiliwawa immediately. from your country. My country is better than your country. People from your country are dumb. People from your country are ugly. Thank goodness you've returned. I found out some interesting stuff. It turns out Nigel The children are out of control! All of the supplies are missing! My airboards! My pogo shoes gone! Most of the food has disappeared, and the children aren't even eating what's left! They are angry and hateful! Something is very wrong! You must get to the bottom of this! Did you bring anything back from your trip? Look, I found this postcard. It's signed Nigel, but it's filled with spelling mistakes. And Nigel's spelling is usually meticulous. Yeah, and look at the postmark. It's dated before the camp even opened. Hmm? 
Look at this note from Chione. It said, Pink, not here. Something a sinister is a surfacing. You, you better hide any of your clues under the loose boards in the supply shed. Okay. <laughs> This. That's your old friend, Guy Fox. Most of the kids in England burn their guy dummies, but not you. You love your... Or... Guy Fox. Secret hiding place. So, this is where Von Schmarty said to hide stuff. <laughs> Don't chuck a wobbly, you boofhead! <laughs> Von Schmarty! I'm in the tool shed. Well, come out! I'm stuck in here. Kamokin locked me in. Oh boy, be right there! Pink, we have to find young Lee. He's very upset. Please, Pink, find young Lee! Please, Pink, find Jung Lee! Pink Panther, you're working too hard. Why not take a few days off? I think we've got some trouble here, boss. Trouble, Schmubble. Um, perhaps you're right. Better get back to work. Life jackets. Well, if all else fails, at least there's creamed corn. Please, Pink, find Jung Lee! Thank 
我很乐意，在现在不给你认真看八个钱。What did he say? I don't know. Most children on this trip were supposed to speak several languages, but Yun Li will only speak Chinese. What should we do? I signed you up for a one-day crash course in basic Chinese. Great. Where do I go? China. Here we go again. I'll be back in one day with my response. Take your seat and fasten your seatbelt. The aircraft will be moving shortly. We're next on the runway to take off. If you'll make sure your seatbelts are fastened, we'll be on our way promptly. for flying Air Smarty. We'll be cruising at an altitude of 42,000 feet today. Once we finish our climb, you can remove your seatbelt and move freely about the cabin. Meal and beverage today? Sure. In just a few minutes, we'll be arriving in Beijing. The current weather conditions are cool and clear. What a thrill to have you here! Hurry and get ready. You are on in five. Perfect! Your face is a masterpiece. Don't blink. You'll smudge your eyes. Oh, it fits you just right. I like 
his voice better than my real voice. That takes care of the unattractive small one. You should not have harmed Louie. You made a grave mistake. Louie will be very sore at you. That means if I don't get you, Louie will be very sore at me. That means I must get you. Okay, get me now. I am free now. But oh, whatever is good for you, I am free now. Okay, now it is. <laughs> blinded. I am blinded, you dirty panther. I cannot see. <laughs> I do not speak your language. Have you eaten yet? <clears throat> oh, uh, uh, why no? What a great honor it is to meet you. May we invite you to our home for dinner? Please do. Oh, we just did. Wang Li, Namchak, come. But later, food will get cold. Set it down. <laughs> My cooking is very bad. You won't like it. Oh, I'm sure it's... Very, very bad. Tastes are disgusting. Is it really that bad? No, it's a Chinese custom. Too much modesty. <laughs> oh my goodness, are you out of your... This is delicious, incredible. I've never tasted... Did you taste this? It's unreal. Come here, give me a hug. This is too good. No flavor. Yes flavor, very good flavor. Superb flavor. How'd I do? Too, too good. This is my brother's son, Young Li. He is family genius. Very, very smart. Sure. Uh, he is at a special camp for genius called Camp Genius Hawawa. I see. When not busy being genius, he helped his father with farming. He lived with us so he can go to good school in Beijing. His father, rice farmer. A very bad English. But very good rice, I suppose. You must go to his farm. Visit his rice. Make lucky rice for him. But I don't know if I can make lucky rice. 
Unless it has a boil-in bag. Sure! I'll try. It's a too far to walk. Yes! Yes! You ride it! I don't let my bird out of its cage. Now my bird is gone. God! You hear me? God! Sorry. Hold that door. Thanks for dinner. Goodbye. We say Zai Zhang. That means goodbye. Zai Zhang, everyone. Zai Zhang! Gone! Gone! You hear me? boy's bird. He's gonna be thrilled. Oh no, I lost my wash. Can you help me? I can try. found something that belongs to you. Give me the bird. Hmm? Hello, Frank. What do you say? Sorry for losing... Frank. Not you. Shay Shay. He said thank you. You're welcome. Bye again, and thanks. So long, baby. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Here, take my hat. How can I ever repay you? Ah, you can't. So don't try. Your thanks was payment enough. Thanks again. Whoops. See, now you overpaid. Are you... Same ancient method for rice farming, not modern. Hey, if it ain't broke...
fancy pink westerner seems silly to you to get down on hand and knee. Not true. My son, he's smart boy. He can live in both worlds, yours and mine. He goes to special chili camp camp to meet smart children, speak their language with them and talk about the future. How many languages does he speak? Mandarin Chinese, English and Russian dabbles in Hebrew. Really? But he's most comfortable with Chinese. No, English. He goes to English school since he was a baby. Even an English-speaking nursery, he will be an important Chinese diplomat. Strange. You are a lucky visitor. Will make my rice very good? I hope so. Chinese opera star? I suppose I am. You do a little sing-song for my rice. Oh, why? Please! Can I ask you a question now? What does Wo Hen Yi say Xin Chair Fugeni Chin Chair Hambagajen mean? Mean? I glad to pay you on Tuesday for one hamburger today. Huh. Huh? Uh, hello? <coughs> yeah. I was just here talking to Young Lee's father. He told me his son speaks four languages, most fluently. English. Pink, Indrani wants to talk to you. Give me that thing. Oh, Pink Panther, I meant to bring Marigold to my grandfather's grave before I left. Please. He's buried in a Hindu graveyard in my hometown, Varanasi. Will you bring him flowers for me? If not, I'll do it myself. Indrani, I... Now. Do it now. If I have to tell my parents that you wouldn't do me this one simple favor, you can kiss your job goodbye. Do you understand me? Goodbye! Oh, and take your time. Thank you. Well, I guess I'm on my way to Varanasi. Varanasi? India. Shortly! Let me guess. This is a hijacking? Oh, tall! What's with those ridiculous costumes? They're not costumes, man! They're disguises! They're the only ones they had left, man! I guess you guys thought of everything. That's right, man! We did! There's just one thing. Yeah? If you're out here and he's out here yeah then who is flying the plane sorry <laughs> uh, i better help too uh, listen to me pink panther uh, i don't even think they're using that parachute to jump out of that door and, and escape i wouldn't dare <laughs> I don't even think of waiting 10 seconds to pull the cord either. So, uh, so, uh, so you don't get stuck in the plane, I mean. Don't even think of it. I'm not thinking at all. I'm completely blank. Mate toe. to Tempu, the capital of Bhutan. Psst, do you have any hexes? You say you want to buy a letter X? A hex! I'm asking do you have a hex? Oh, a hex. Well, that's a strange request. Cast a hex on my opponent's team for me, please! Well, I don't know. 
Mine's a pretty powerful hex. Then you must! I'm on my way to India. If you help me, I will reward you with a special hood. It will allow you to enter a zong. What's a dong? Please, there's no time. If the Thimpu Trekkers don't beat the Tongsai Yak Masters, we will be disgraced. They won last month. Oh, for heck's sake, I'll help you. But then I have got to get going. I have business to take care of in India. The Hex, please. What? That's it? You're done? It's a very powerful spell. Anymore, and he'd have gone blind. I might need this if I want to get into a zong. Whatever that is, what's gonna happen to him? First, he'll feel a bit lightheaded. Then, he'll have a sinking feeling in his stomach. Finally, when he goes to shoot an arrow, he's gonna... Win! He's gonna win! What have you done? It takes about an hour to kick in? Oh, no! We're ruined! Let me make it up to you. I'm an excellent archer. I'll play with your team. I don't know. Honest, just give me a try. Fine, but you have to find your own equipment. <laughs> now I just need a bow. <laughs> Never know when this could come in handy. This is Tempu's oldest citizen. Padma Samhava is an Indian mystic who introduced Buddhism here 1200 years ago. I'm on my way to India now. It was said that as a boy, Padma cleansed his face only with butter. Well, that explains his real creamy complexion. Bhutanese children rub his face with butter to show love. Oh, well, I'll do the same if I get any. Log JG. What's that mean? It means goodbye. Log JG to you, my dear. What's cooking? Hemadatsi, our national dish. Dried chilies cooked with cheese. So, I guess you guys don't have a TFC round here, huh? TFC? Tucky fried chicken. Chicken? Chicken? I'm a bit old-fashioned. I would never eat a chicken. Why not? An old folktale warns that on Judgment Day between death and rebirth, your soul will be judged. A chicken will place white pebbles on the scale for all the good deeds you have done. A pig will place black pebbles on the scale for all the bad you have done. And so you would never eat chicken because... Wrong enemy to make. However, I do eat pigs. I make a nasty BLT. Want one? No thanks. So in the old days, to make sure that no harm came to them, people were known to strap live chickens on their backs. Well, I'm in a strange country, traveling without my credit card. I could use a little reassurance. Strap one on me. Chickens do not grow on trees. If you want my bird, then trade me something, please. Oh, terrific. I love the crosswords. Here's your chicken, Panther. Gee, this is a lot more comfortable than I would have imagined. Hi! That's our village's song.
Really? And what is a zong? A zong houses government officials and religious leaders. It is a place where both prayers and decisions are made, and you can't get in without a scarf. You are a very informative young lady. Yaggity yak! People ride on my back! Do you need anything? I need a bow and arrow. I've already got the arrow. I need an arrow. Well, I would trade you my arrow for your bow, but I need my arrow. I'm going to be in an archery tournament. I need your arrow too. I'll give you my bow for it. Then neither one of us will have a complete set. I understand your reluctance. Take your time. <coughs> nice chicken. Here. Here's my arrow. I don't know what I'm going to do with just a bow, and I don't know what you're going to do with just an arrow, but... A bow. Now what will you shoot from it? Pink Archer, come here for a moment. Where did you learn to shoot like that? Oh, a friend from my hood showed me. Robin? Robin from the hood? <laughs> can you show me some of his moves? It's not something you can teach. It's more like... Dumb luck. That's one way of putting it. Welcome to Bhutan. Here, please accept this go. It is traditional Bhutanese dress. Why, thank you. Can you stay with us? visit the palace for a few days. I would love to, but I'm on my way to India. How are you traveling? Well, I had a jet. It won't be able to land here. The clouds and the mountains. Can you help me? I'm the king of Bhutan. I'd like to think so. I'll call my pilot. My friend needs transportation. Slight problem, your majesty. What is it? Someone stole the royal rotor. Stole? Well, it's missing. We can't fly without it. Where can we get a new one? It will take many days to arrive. I don't have many days. I don't have any days. I'm in a big rush. I'll go on yak back. Not on this yak's back, you won't. Sorry, boss. That's a long trip. We must find the missing rotor. Split up to search. Anyone who knows anything about it should report to the palace immediately. We must find the missing rotor. Split up to search. Anyone who knows anything about it should report to the palace immediately. We can't go anywhere without the rotor!
sorry to hear about the missing propeller. Uh, but as long as you're stuck in Bhutan, why not consider playing for the Thimpu Trekkers? They're all that! Hey! <laughs> Ah, yes, it's lovely. Yakety yak, that's no snack. You'll be happy to know I played just fine in the archery tournament without my arrow. What would you like today? The royal rotor for one, or else a yak that's willing to travel to India. You won't find any yaks near my home. My son is allergic. He is away right now, such a smart boy. Meeting with children from all over the world to discuss world peace. He is at... Don't tell me. He is at Camp Willy Chacha. I hope he is remembering to take his allergy medicine. So, you say he's allergic to yak hair? That's right, and any other long-haired animals. Sad because he likes dogs too. Dogs! But he has a sneezing fit if he goes near them. I see. I want to have a present for him when he comes home. A new go. But I haven't been able to find one special enough. When your son gets home, tell him this. Once belonged to the king. this in return. One of my favorite Bhutanese condiments. Hmm? Ooh, what is this? Yak butter? Close. It's I can't believe it's not yak butter. Who needs all those extra calories? Thanks. Er, um, excuse me. I think I'm going to take this in private. Is everything okay? Quick, where is Ananda? I just saw him go off with that dog from the Better Camping Bureau. Was he sneezing? Sneezing? Answer the question, man. Was he sneezing? I, I don't understand. I don't have time for your conundrum, Smarty. Did the boy appear to be suffering from any allergies? No, he was fine. I see. Something's terribly wrong at Camp Chilliwawa, smart stuff. Terribly wrong. I have to go. There's a rotor that needs finding. I was told you were a mystic? I'm looking for a missing rotor to complete my journey to India. Can you help me? I can't believe it's not yak butter. Try to get over the shock. The Raven's Call, a special song. Give them foods, reveal what's wrong. A certain person's not what they seem. A wolf in sheep's clothing. The Raven's Call, a special song. Give them foods, reveal what's wrong. A certain person's not what they seem, a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's what I said. Uh, thanks. I'll work on it. What are you doing? An offering for the sacred ravens. They sing a holy song all day. Ah, ah, ah. I put dough on my song as an offering. It 
It's a beautiful dong. Thank you, my friend. Why don't you come up? Here, have some dough. I'll give it to a raven, thanks. Masters have tricks up their hat. Now all they need's a tall pink cat. I didn't want you to leave. I'm touched. You recovered the royal rotor. Remarkable. It was nothing. Well, let's get going. You are welcome in Bhutan anytime. I'll probably have trouble getting back to visit. When are you gonna build a real airport? Open the doors to a little tourism, huh? Pave this rough terrain, and you could even have a great big amusement park or something.
to the magical place We will skip the rat race So you may not recognize the looks on our face In Bhutan In time in Bhutan In time in Bhutan Indrani, I was in a plane wreck. Then I had to find a missing copter part. And then I had to wipe the tears from my eyes. What a touching story. I'm on my way to India now. Don't worry, I'll do what you ask. Just try to have fun. Fun? Hmm, I remember fun. It's just been so long. Sweetest kid, once you get to know her. Well, thanks for everything. Don't change a thing. Log J. Gay, your highness. Log J. Gay, Pink Panther friend. <laughs> Namaste! Welcome to Bombay! I'm a huge star, baby! Oh no, your outfit is all wrong! Ew, what is that horrible pink fabric? Double knit? I love it! Do you love it? It's you! To me, this ensemble says, Yes, I milk goats in the afternoon, but come evening, I change my blouse and I'm ready to party! Woohoo! Should I wrap it? Oh my goodness gracious! It was made for you! Is it just me, or do you love it too? It's very slimming. You look to die for! Take it off, I can't stand it! What can I get you? <laughs> Sugar cane straight up with a twist. Delicious. Primate J, J J J. What is it? D. I insist you sample a cup, dude. I'd like to think so. Oh no, dude. It means milk. Do you want some? Hey, I'm a feline. I don't turn down, dude. Ah. Want to see me charm this snake? Yeah. I'll make it worth your while. How's this? If you can charm this snake as well as I do, you can have some of my wife's flowers for free. Okay, you're on. Now you. Oh, your playing was terrible. But I played in band. Mrs. Nagel said I had potential. My snake didn't find you the least bit charming. Now I have lost her for good. I'm sorry. I said I'm sorry. I'll find that snake and charm her if it's the last thing I do. Right, treat my friend. Try some bell puri or marsala dosa. Let me try some bell puri. Light on the bell, extra puri if you can.
I think I might prefer the puri to this masala dosa. Hot, hot, hot! So, this is Bell Puri. It's purry good. Hey, Spice Man, do you know where Varanasi is? Thanks anyway. Hey, Spice Man, do you know where Varanasi is? Thanks anyway. I have a ripe and juicy fruit. Not for free, my friend. I know you're here, Snake Heart. I can hear you breathing. Snake! Answer me, Serpent! Namaste. Namaste, kid. Say, have you seen a little snake? About so long? Kind of purple, see? Wearing mascara. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. So she is here. Let me talk to her. Let me see her. Walk away, Panther. I'm nothing but trouble, see? I'm all wrong. Bad news. Damaged goods. Hanging crooked. Twisty as a snake. You're talking crazy stuff. Just crazy. Why, when I saw you in that crowded market, eyes like daggers, a mouthful of venom. Why, I thought you were the most beautiful reptile I'd ever seen. You've got charisma, kid, and don't you forget it. Now, get your things. We're going home. Sweet talker. Don't tell me I can't charm a snake. Shoot. See my wife, she'll give you some jasmine. I charmed your husband's snake, so to speak. Not so easy to do. He said you might give me some flowers. Jasmine! Jasmine, I will give you one piece of information in exchange. Is that fair? No, because I have more than one question to ask you. Then why did you shake your head yes? I didn't. I shook my head no. 
A boat won't sail without a row. Uh, it was the only thing that rhymed. I still don't get it. Look, Panther, it's simple. You shake your head side to side, and in India, that means yes. Oh, so you've got it backwards. No, you do. Uh, no, you. No, you. Well, I guess we're both right. Kinda. Say, can you tell me how to get to Varanasi? Oh. Um... Hey, Spice Man! Do you know where Varanasi is? Where? Right away, East, my friend. Too far to walk. You've got a long journey ahead. Would you like some spice? Sure, thanks a lot. Feel free to sample what you like. I am the Great Polly. I do not want a cracker. I can foresee the future. Show me your palm. Is this possible? You have got the longest lifeline I've ever seen. It goes on and on. You're gonna live forever. Oh, wait. <laughs> Seems I just have a piece of dental floss stuck to my lens. <laughs> You'll be dead in a week. <laughs> kidding, kidding. I have ripe and juicy. Oh, go ahead and take one. Hello. Pink, please hurry! I'm worried about the children! Things are getting really weird here at the camp! I'm still in Bombay! How far is Varanasi? Quite far! It's a train! I'm having problems with communications! The weather is very bad! I can't reach the jet pilot! Train to Varanasi, huh? Anyone know where I can get the train to Varanasi? Victoria Terminal? I'm on my way there now! Follow me! Goodbye, pink friend. Come on! You missed the train! Rice is nice. Ew. The people in this village use my branches to brush their teeth, and so should you. <laughs> welcome! Did you know in India pink is the color of welcome? A pink panther! You're the most welcome here, my friend. Well, thank you. So busy, I didn't even have time to take lunch. I am behind in my work. <laughs> oh, excuse the howls of my bowels. My empty tummy is vengeful. How far is Varanasi from here? A day on the train. How far is the train? An hour on the bus. Uh, 
How far is the bus stop? 30 minutes on foot. Can you show me how to get there? We have to go help with dinner. The man who weaves fabric will go to Varanasi tonight. He sells his goods there. Hi, I'm Chamunda. That's, That's another, another name, name for Durga, Durga the, the warrior, warrior goddess. goddess. My father weaves fabric, and my mother tends to our house and farm. We live over there. See you later. Do you belong to this house over here? Are you kidding? I pretty much get free run of the joint. I don't know where you're from, but Kelva worships you. I mean, literally. I do what I want, I go where I want, I eat what I want. Sounds like a sweet deal. And why not? I supply the dude. Dude is very important, after all. Well, you don't have to tell me about the importance of... dude. <laughs> Panther! I'm parched! Grab me a little something to drink, would ya? Could ya? Come here! Oh, thank you. If I can ever do anything to repay you, just ask. Remember how you said, if I ever needed a favor to just ask? Absolutely! You shushed my grooming belly, boss. For that I owe you. What would you like in return? How about a little pot? Oh, pot! It's more pot for give me, of course! Thank you! My throat was bleeding! Mother! Mother! Yes, dear? We need some milk for tonight's supper. Of course, dear. Would you like to milk, Mother? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Milk the cow! I'm milking, I'm milking. Day, you know. This is one of Mother's most plentiful milkings in weeks. Please join us for dinner. Why, thank you. I'd be delighted. I am late with dinner. Can you help me? How? I need water, rice, and spice to make my curry nice. That rhymes. Yes, rhyming things helps you remember. Yes, Benther? Can I trouble you for one more pot? Yes, one last time. But after this, I must draw the line. I gotta make a living, buddy. I need water, rice, and spice to make my curry nice. Mm -hmm. 
I need water, rice and spice to make my curry nice. Water, rice and spice. It makes my curry nice. It is so hot, so we eat outside. Eat, eat. Uh, shouldn't we... No, we eat first, then my mother and Chamanda. Then my wife. But why? Men need the most strength. We must stay healthy. Then the mother and the unmarried daughter must eat. We cannot let an unmarried daughter become unhealthy. If we are to find her a husband, then my daughter-in-law can eat. She already has a husband. So things are done a bit differently here. In many ways. If Chamunda fell ill, what kind of ad could I place for her in the Hindustan Times? Thin, sickly child with deep cough seeks husband? Oh, how many would reply? Say, are you friends with the little girls who live across the way? Do you ever invite them over to dinner? They would not come to dinner. They are Brahmins. Brahmins? Their father is a priest. Brahmins are high up in the caste system. Caste system? I don't suppose you'd be willing to explain the concept to me in a simple yet lyrical song that I could really groove to. My Panther friend, I don't want to shock ya But what I'm about to tell you might rock ya Ow, well, well, well There's long time been our tradition We call it the caste system You're born into your caste There's not much that you can do But be the best you can or simply try to muddle girls Once there were four different castes Divided by profession You did the work of your caste Please famine or recession Caste system is what you're born into Caste system will make for us just to you Caste system is if I told your position Shatriya, Vasyas, and Sutras too. Now there's so many others. I couldn't name them all to you. Last was the outcast, whose treatment was unkind. In the social structure, their caste came last in line. Referred to as untouchables, labeled as unclean. One man known as Gandhi spoke out and called his treatment me. They could drink from the wells where water was got. Touch food meant for a higher caste. Ow, it may as well rock. Sign. Caste systems, what you're born into. What you're born into. Caste systems, will make for us just to be. Caste systems, if I told your position. Caste systems, part of any institution. Gandhi felt the handling was cruel and unjust. Is a brothel treatment in Muhammad they could trust. Adopting an untouchable girl took a people under his wing. Then the Indian government tried to abolish the whole thing. <laughs> Passing laws that they hoped would prohibit caste discrimination. That was their attempt to try and integrate the nation. You'd be dead wrong if you assumed discrimination was a thing of the past. Think about the place that you call home. Who are your outcasts? Your position. The caste system, if I told your position. The caste system, if I told your position. The caste system, if I told your position.
So the anti-discrimination laws didn't work. Please, there is still very much discrimination here, particularly against women of all castes. In this village, it is considered inappropriate for women to disrobe to bathe. Only the men should take off their clothes and bathe in the pond. We are to remain fully clothed and only pour water over our saris, not to mention the whole dowry. Do you like the women's saris? Yes, they're very colorful. I made the fabric myself. My wife dyes patterns. I am taking some to Varanasi to sell. I need to go to Varanasi too. Can I travel with you? Why yes, I'd like the company. Want me to get your back? Jai Gurudeva, I am in meditation. Leave me alone. I hate to tell you, but this river doesn't seem like the best place to get clean. This river is for cleansing and blessing the soil, not the skin. I would hope so, because... Now I would not have done that. This is Shiva's river in Shiva's holy city. Who is Shiva? In Hindu mythology, Shiva is the creator and the destroyer. There are over 2,000 temples and shrines in Varanasi. Many are dedicated to him. I'd like to visit one. Only one will greet non-Hindu visitors. I've seen a lot of incredible things here in India. No doubt you visited the Taj Mahal. No, I didn't have time. Didn't have time? You must at least know the story behind it. Can't say that I do. Ah, what a story. Would you like to hear it? Once lived a man who loved his wife. Her name was Taj Mahal. He shared with her.
somehow Two lovers lie together now Their love's withstood the test of time Still stands The Taj Mahal I was in the original cast of Les Miserables. That was beautiful. I have a job to finish. I really must go. Oh dear me. I am here to mourn the passing of my cousin, a sultry, sexy, sassy pigeon from New York. New York? Yes, my poor, kind cousin was trying to catch up with a pink panther friend. My cousin only wanted to protect pink. Oh no! I kill me! I really do! I sweep before I step, so that I might not kill any insects. I cover my nose and mouth, so that I might not accidentally suck in any living creature and cause it harm. In my religion, we believe to kill anything at all is wrong. How about killing time? Is that okay? I have to ask. Don't cry. It'll grow back. I remember my first short haircut. I didn't like it one bit. head is shaved because I'm the chief mourner. My grandfather died. It's a Hindu tradition for the chief mourner to shave his head. Ah, so you're not sad about your haircut. You're sad about your grandfather dying? I'm not sad. Today we're celebrating the passing of my grandfather. You didn't like him. We love him. Then why are you celebrating? Today he is reborn. No one can cry. It's bad luck. He asked to be cremated? He does not have to ask. It is his right. We are Hindu. So that is our tradition. It is every Hindu's wish to have their ashes scattered in the Ganges. And so you're not sad. I will miss my grandfather, but I will see him again. As Hindus, we believe that only the body dies, not the soul. My grandfather's soul will be released and he will be reincarnated. Reincarnated? He will come back as something else, depending on what his karma is. My grandfather was a kind man, so his karma is good. I see. Uh, say, I have to bring these flowers to the grave of a friend. Can you tell me where the Hindu graveyard in Varanasi is? But I told you, there is no graveyard. In Varanasi, this river is Hindu's only graveyard. Why wouldn't Indrani know that? She's from Varanasi. The plot sure is thickening. I guess I'll just try to find some marigolds for Indrani's grandfather and leave them in the river. Namaste! Namaste! I dip my sari in the holy water for blessings. Holy water, that's cold! Hello, I am the priest of Durga's temple, the only temple that allows non-Hindus. I'm trying to find the cemetery where a Hindu friend might be buried. There are no Hindu cemeteries in Varanasi. Namaste! I know where I can get marigolds, but it's very, very far. It involves a long outdoor train ride back to Bombay. When you gotta go, you gotta go! So 
soon? Namaste, kid. Uh, don't go anywhere. I'm going to need you to get back to Victoria Terminal. Okay! Slight communication gap. Marigolds, do you have any? Indeed I do. Please, I just came from Varanasi and I need some flowers to put in the Ganges River. Varanasi, the holy Ganges River. Of course, of course. That was easy. Wait a minute. How do I know you really need those flowers to bring to the holy Ganges River in Varanasi? Hmm? I want proof. to be the problem. You're a psychic. Can you please confirm that the marigolds I need are for the sacred Ganges River in Varanasi? Who do I look like? Dion Warlock? Okay, kid, I'll help you. Just cause you're cute. You know the drill. Show me your paw. I am the great Polly. The panther's words are true. He just came from the Ganges River and... It's coming in a bit foggy, Panther. Can you stand on one foot? Maybe I'll get a better reception. Oh, you had it a minute ago. There, it's coming in perfectly clear. The Panther needs to place the marigolds in the Ganges River to put a young girl at ease. And that's the truth. Thank you. Sure thing. I'll invoice you. Marigolds for the Holy Ganges River, of course. I am sorry I ever doubted you. Please say, what's up, to Shiva for me. Will do. Now to head back to Victoria Terminal. I'll say this for you, kid. You got great timing. Grandfather and Drani. Pink, the weather here at camp is very bad. I have something important I must talk to you about. I'm sending transport. Can you hear me? Pink! Something rotten is going on in Camp Chiliwawa. I just know it. Smarty, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, sorry, Pippa Pink. I need to lie down. Can't talk, must rest. Where are all the children? Can't talk, must rest. Bun Smarty, Bun Smarty, I've got to stop this rain. Bun Smarty will drown. The rain, Pink, must not get wet. <laughs> There's a stick jammed in the controls. That must be what's causing the rain. A crowbar. Come, a 
again some other day. Yes, fine rock, Pink, fine rock. Perhaps we should rest again. Rest? The kids are missing. The place is in ruins. We haven't... These prints in the mud look suspicious. They're leading out towards the jets. Von Schmarty, I found some strange prints in the mud over by the lake. I think it's some kind of clue. Don't be too hasty, Pink. You can't chase every dog that box. Von Schmarty, you know I have great respect for you, but are you sure we're not overlooking those strange prints by the lake? You want to be the big man? You go ahead! You don't need my help! You never listen to me anyway! I'm screw helping you! Leave me alone! I can't help but think those prints are a lead. It's not much of a lead, but it's all I've got. Please take your seat and fasten your seatbelt. The aircraft will be moving shortly. Big, big day for wildlife travel. First the croc, now the panther. Hello, Pink Panther, and thank you for flying Air Smarty. We'll be cruising at an altitude of 42,000 feet today. Once we finish our climb, you can remove your seatbelt and move freely about the cabin. Cutthroat Entrepreneur scores prime real estate. Huh. The notorious DOG has struck again, this time ousting longtime residents of Happy Farms Retirement Home from their sprawling acreage? He's unstoppable. Happy Farms director reported, once he has his mind set on a property for his Dog Burger restaurant, you may as well pack your bags. Dog Burger restaurant? At Camp Chili Wawa? Could it be? Positively, uh, just to be extra safe, I'll turn the volume way down. Now this time, we're sure to get it right, man! Yep, we'll apply what we learned from the last time and keep our identities hidden. You won't even know it's a hijacking! Well, we'll just keep on flying round the world. He'll never get in the dog father's bar again. And there's no way he can escape! That's right, Louie. He, he would never be smart enough to use the parachute again. He, even if he was, he would never think to wait 10 seconds before pulling the cord. You, you know, so, so he doesn't get stuck on the jet and all. Can you give me a hand? My people have always extended their hand to the white man, but have only been betrayed in return. What about the pink man? We never had pink. I promise I'll bring no harm to your people. Bring no evil goodies either. Evil goodies? Cigarettes, alcohol, 
Joni loves Chachi reruns. My people knew nothing of these perils until... I promise I'll bring no harm to your people. That is called a dendroglyph. The carving on the tree marks the burial place of a loved one. Some aborigines mummify their loved ones and bury them in a place like this. That bark is our canvas. We paint on tree bark and use it for many other useful things. Up there are eucalyptus leaves, the koala's favorite snack. Potent. You look like an agile panther. Would you mind fetching some witchetty grubs for me? It's the least I can do to repay you for rescuing me. Where can I get some witchetty grubs? In a witchetty bush. You dab at the roots with a pointed stick until you feel them give. If they do, there are witchetty grubs free for the spearing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I would give my left paw for some eucalyptus leaf. My prayers are answered. I'm a marsupial. That means I tote my wee ones in a pouch. Well, not just any pouch. My pouch. You wanna see? Joey, get out here. Yeah, Ma. Is he adorable? Ma, you're embarrassing me. I'm a duck-billed platypus. Is it me or am I unusually funny looking? Grubs galore. I win. Hey, what are you doing? I'm psyching myself up over here. For what? For that huge mound of termites. I'm a thrilled lizard. I'm in a terrible rush. I'm not dangerous. Can't talk. Gotta run. Ah, thank you. I knew you would provide. This is our totem. Those are our sacred animals, and they cannot be hunted in these woods. Our ancestors passed them on to us from our dreaming. Dreaming? The dream time. Find one of these for yourself, and I will play it for you. Teach you about our dreaming. This instrument is called a didgeridoo. It's made of hollowed wood.
Have some. It's kangaroo. Children cannot eat kangaroo meat. It gives them nightmares. Really? Why is that? Because that way there's more left for the adults. As you can tell, was that you that rang my bell? Say, what is a fliggery spoo? I mean, uh, Kalamazoo. Uh, uh, a wizardy foo. And herbal shampoo? You mean a didgeridoo. It's a musical instrument made from an enormous hollow tree branch. Sounds like this. <laughs> oh, right. Toodles! <laughs> Mouth watering, ain't it? Not exactly. Say, can you carve wood? I leave that to the little guys. Too bad. Hey! Ready, set, lick! <laughs> Mites don't fail me now. Uh. Fancy chewing, guys. Thanks. Put your lips around it and blow while I tell you of our dreaming. Sacred words and rhymes The answers were passed on to us 
In the dream time, people could change into their totem animals when they needed to or wanted to. Really? So you mean if one of your people wanted to change into, say, a crocodile, it could be done? In the dream time, certainly. Today, it would take a spirit very connected to their dreaming to accomplish such a thing. You think Kumokin is capable of such a thing? I used to think so. When he was a boy, he only knew our people, our land, our language. Now he wants to live in urban cities, go to special coldy camps, and drink Wawa. I don't know. He has not yet been traditionally initiated into manhood. And if he never is, he cannot ever truly carry on his heritage. Well, what do you mean by initiated into manhood? We have our customs. We have our traditions. I didn't mean to pry. I am sorry. You do not understand what has happened to our people. This land was ours before Australia was colonized. Us, Aborigines, as you call us, serve this land. This was our kingdom. Five hundred thousand Aboriginals lived on this land when white men arrived. Half that many were murdered. Today, we are only one percent of the population in Australia. We? we we have always embraced strangers. The first white people to arrive at our land were not settlers. They were prisoners. Prisoners? Our people accepted the white man's outcasts. In return, they attempted to exterminate our race. Like what happened to the Tasmanians. Completely extinct. And so you feel that when your child strays from his homeland... He is helping to complete the genocide. We must keep our history alive. It was not so long ago that white men took our children from us, forced us to live on reserves, took us there in chains, beat us for speaking our language and for practicing our religions, infected us with their foreign diseases, broke our spirit. 
I'm sorry. For what? You didn't do anything. You don't have any strange diseases, do you? If being long, pink, and single is a disease, then don't even try to cure me. <laughs> uh oh. The croc. Kamokin, I know his eyes. He traveled here from Camp Chiliwawa. Kamokin spirit, there is something wrong at the camp. There is danger where Kamokin has come from. He says you are needed at that place. Tell Kamokin I'm coming. I'll call my jet. Don't worry, I'm a secret agent. Your son is in good hands. I know he is, Pink Panther. There, little fella. Hmm, this should come in handy later. Don't count your chickens before they're hatched, dog father. I'll be needing this for evidence. place. Holy socks and sweaters! It's worse than I expected! I better take one of these for evidence. Is it full yet? <laughs> Try and catch me. You're right. Sorry, I was nasty before. Why don't you go for a swim? Go for a swim. <laughs> Yikes! So that's what happens if you don't wait an hour to swim after eating. I said when the time is right! I can't pretend that everything is okay anymore. I'm cracking up. No one goes anywhere until all my plans are finalized. I'm warning you, I'll tell Pink Panther. Then you'll be in deep water, worse off than the real kids, if you know what I mean. Okay, where are the real children, you canine trickster? I don't know what you're talking about. Pink Panther! That's right, boss. 
boy, you've got real nostrils to pull a stunt like this. I, I had to go along. He, he blackmailed me. He said he would turn the children into dog burgers, I swear. Kidnapping the children and planning to turn Chili Wawa into one of your lucrative dog burger restaurants? How low can you stoop? This low! You're gonna get locked away for this. Uh, oh, yeah? Y you can't prove nothing, can you? I found a little article written about you in private jet quarterly. Not to mention your premature sailing of the dog burger flag. And the evidence I uncovered proving that the kids aren't really kids at all. Remote controlled robots, dog dad? Pretty clever. And then there's this blueprint outlining your plans to turn Camp Chili Wawa into one of your lucrative dog burger restaurants. Plus, this decoded hieroglyphic note that tells me the real Chione is having a great time, wherever she is. And not to mention this phony postcard you forged to Nigel's family, riddled with spelling mistakes when Nigel is a champion speller. My plan worked perfectly. I programmed the robots to hate Camp Chili Wawa no matter what happened. Now the Better Camping Bureau has shut the place down and I can open my restaurant as soon as the paperwork goes through. Would you like some fries with your burger? There will be no fries. And there will be no burgers! I'll find the real kids and turn you in! I, I won't hold my breath. I wish you would. Come on, get him! I gotta hide somewhere. It lights up. Works perfectly as an overhead light. Oh no, the battery's dead. Now we're cooking with gas. I guess I'm up for a little game of him <clears throat> hide and seek. Hmm, Marco? Follow! Come out, come out wherever you are. Uh, nobody's hiding in the smokestack, man! Uh, everybody's busy hiding in the other places! Come again some other day! <laughs> Fee, fi, fo, fares. Methinks I smell a big nose beneath them stairs.
You dirty, dirty dog. Now I just need to find the kid. by toys and games and fun. fun. We prayed the plan would come undone. Done, done, done. We were trapped in a bubble, but now we're out. So I'll sail off on my airport. And I will scream and shout. The danger brought us closer. We shared a I heard about what you did over there, Panther. Most impressive. You realize you'll be decorated for all this? I had suspected as much. I had an overwhelming number of requests for your services this morning. What with the news just out? I see. And have you selected my next assignment? Very dangerous. Of course. Assignment entails high combat, espionage, and fish sticks on Wednesdays. Fish sticks on Wednesdays? That's right, Pencil. Undercover lunch lady. I've already ordered your hairnet. It's a cutting-edge school. They've implemented the spark. Close-minded Panther, a job is a... Job! What's that funny? Behaviors. 
Once lived a boy with a penchant for magic. His story is one that's both joyful and tragic. It started one night as he paced in his room, when that strange bug called Chance came into full bloom. A party for dinner the boy's parents would host, and as guests would raise up their glasses to toast, a visiting daughter who went up to play would find herself altered in a most peculiar way. A novice warlock. The girl was no longer bright eyes and clean frock, but a slobbering beast, an error most foul. And who could reverse this? A true friend. A pink pal. T'was chance yet again that led him to the boy, in the form of a salesman. Strong pitch, dab of coy. The children were desperate and needed King's aid, but the risk would be great, and the cat was afraid. The boy had no choice. Coercion was needed. He cast a cruel spell that makes book be deleted. The frantic pink cat knew not what to do, said the warlock to the cat, Helping us will help you. And so Pink would begin to search across the world wide for the girl's needed cure. And a salve for his hide. I know what you're wondering. You're sharp, I can tell. How that amateur wizard proved to cast a true spell. Without dragging the young hopeful's name through the mud. I confess to have helped him, yours truly. Strange blood. I had a terrible dream. Wanna be magicians? Slobbering wombats? Where am I? What happened? Pink Panther, that's me, drops out of the super spy business and becomes a traveling salesman. That much I remember. I guess this must be one of the houses I stumbled into to try to sell the Book of Knowledge. Maybe I had to use the bathroom. I hope I went. Ahem. Ahem. 
An expression of gratitude is customary, sir. An expression of gratitude? Why didn't you say so? Thank you. How's that for an expression, huh? A monetary expression is customary, sir. For my services. For your services? Are you saying no cold hard green, no fancy latrine? Exactamundo, sir. What a racket. I think I'm starting to notice an interior design theme here. Is it a motif? I think it's a motif. Are you the florist? You're late. The champagne delivery? You're early. Wait a minute. I recognize you now. You're that lowly sales cat who came peddling books. Ms. Periwinkle. Maybe he's here to bid on the Star's Bite collection. Nonsense, Midge. You haven't a clue. He's a commoner. I can smell it on him. It's putrid. Did you say Star's Bite Collection? I suppose you'll need a tip. Take this. Thank you for stopping by to inconvenience us. Farewell, adieu, bon voyage, show yourself out. Come, ladies, there's still time to tour my shoe museum before supper. <laughs> I don't believe we've met. The name's Flip Loose Liver. I see you're without champagne. Yes, quite intentionally. Wouldn't want to wind up with a loose liver, Flip. You go ahead. What are you? I'm a pink panther. Are you a pet? Maybe my daughter wants you. I'm not for sale. I'll pay one quarter of a million. I'll need plenty of food and water. You can pick me up on your way out. Yes, preventative dentistry is where it's all going. I say, take the darn teeth out while they're still good and healthy. Saves you tons of money and safeguards your gums. Put those good teeth on the shelf for special occasions. And for everyday use, try Shino Bar. These are the teeth of the future, gentlemen. No flossing or brushing required. Mine here are the first set ever to be made entirely out of Shino Bar. Allow me to demonstrate. Shino Bar is a high gloss flame retardant material that smells mildly like peanuts and has no problem going through the dishwasher. Shino Bar bounces, it's stain resistant and virtually non sticking. Doesn't seem to belong to anyone in particular. Happy trails! I can't do it with you listening! Uh, forget it! Of going through other people's medicine cabinets, Emily Post writes, and I'm paraphrasing, unless you are a fictitious pink character appearing in a CD-ROM game, do not do it. Luckily...
smile supporter. Support your smile. The boy! The horrible monster! I thought it was all a nightmare, but... You again! Have you changed your mind? Are you ready to talk turkey? If you don't help me transform Violet back into a little girl, then she's... Definitely missing her prom, that's for sure. <laughs> don't cry, Violet! The prom is overrated. I'm not crying because of the prom. I'm crying because I don't want to be a plain little girl. Well, you're not. You're a big hairy. I didn't want to be a wombat either. I wanted to be an immortal, magical ninja princess mermaid. And I wanted to be a traveling salesman, but then little Houdini here erased my book. I told you, if you help me transform Violet into an immortal, magical ninja princess mermaid, then I'll lift the curse off your book and you can go back to your dumb traveling sales job. If you can't reverse her spell, why should I believe you could reverse the spell you cast on my book? I can't do it alone. I need your help. The answers lie with strange blood. in the dark and enchanted woods, you know, behind my house, there lives a warlock named Strangeblood, who alone lives quiet as a mouse. He spins black magic and casts wicked spells, some even claim that the future he tells. The townspeople disowned him and cast him aside, but when he slips away to his lab I do ride. I pinch powder from potions and at his research steal looks. And every so often, I borrow his books. You stole all these things? I borrowed them. It's Strangeblood's books that got us into this mess. It's Strangeblood's books that can get us out. Why do you go into his lab, Nathan, if he caught you? He's evil, Violet. I must master his own sorcery so that one day I can destroy him and save Golden Moles from his villainous clutches. How do you know he's evil? Everybody says so. As Vincent Van Gogh said, I am not an adventurer by choice, but by fate. And so, I'm off to see Uncle Strangeblood now. Wish me luck. I never knew Van Gogh had an Uncle Strangeblood. What an eerie coincidence. If I can hear that, how come he can't? Who's there? Was that you, Wind? I'll be back in an hour, Spot. How bad could he be? He's got a pet named Spot. Every cold night at the stroke of just eight, he walks in the woods for one hour straight. I can be in and out in one hour, no problem. Here, Spot. Spot, are you here? Here, Spot. Spot, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. You're a... Uh, you're just a... Black spot. Black hole, actually, but being called hole wouldn't be very endearing. Wow, you're a real black hole. I've never met one of you before. No one has, except strange blood. That's the old man's spell reversal manual. It contains the magic ingredients needed to reverse a bad spell. That is exactly what I'm looking for. But, 
But every cold night at the stroke of just eight, you walk in the woods for one hour straight. What happened? It was unusually warm out this evening. Oh no! The spell reversal manual! That's alright, I can still read the pages. How do you change a wombat into an immortal magical ninja princess mermaid? Let's see here. To make an immortal mermaid, you'll need to find me. The only thing living in the saltiest sea. To make a magic princess, you'll need a princely laugh. Specifically, the hugest one that has a chilly past. What about the ninja part? Doesn't say. Personally, I would improvise. Can't hike. Good help. That's what you think. Where are we going now? Where are we going? Oopsie. Oopsie what? What oopsie? I kind of crushed your glasses. I'm sorry. Ugh, stay away from my thing. You destructive talking sunburned cat. Leave me in peace. This salt could help me spice up my life. Hey. What are you doing over there? I don't belong here. I'm trying to get back to the Great Rift Valley. But I thought the Dead Sea Lake was in the Great Rift Valley. Sure, lots of things are. The Great Rift Valley is 3,000 miles long. It spans from East Africa through Southwest Asia. I happen to be from Kenya, not exactly next door. How'd you get so far away from home? Part of an effort to repopulate the Middle East with wildlife that once thrived here. I'm not wild about the situation. As an ostrich, I can't fly and I never learned how to swim. If it wasn't for this giant salt lake, I could probably walk home. But that's my only option. So hot, yet huge chunks of ice. Downright unsettling. That's not ice, Monsieur Galips, that's salt. Salt, sea salt, huh? Welcome to the Dead Sea, which is a lake, incidentally. Lowest point on Earth, with some of the saltiest water in existence. What are you doing in there? Trying to cure my eczema. Medical magic in these waters, I tell you. Hi! Hey, you're alive. So are you. But this is the Dead Sea. Supposedly, there's nothing living in it. Get with it. About 60 years ago, Dr. Eliezer Volcani proved that to be false. First, living microbes were found, then single-cell algae, and now the Israeli research team found me, a form of fungus entirely new to science. But how does anything live in such salty water? Never underestimate the power of a microscopic fungus, my friend. Slippery little fungus. Could this little fungus be the only living thing in the saltiest sea? Hmm. Those are the coolest tweezers ever. I'm going to borrow them because I have the strangest feeling that they will come in very handy very soon. You want I should have my property destroyed by you? You already crushed my designer sunglasses. Leave my fine things alone. Okay, hand it over. Hand what over? My postural paper. I need that thing for squeezing the slime out of my papular lesions.
What's that? Both my missing pages. Yes, it belongs to no one. Hey, Yaz, it's milk pouch. It must have fallen off his neck. The milk tastes kind of funny, though. Why so sad, clown? Why you think? Look at me. Clown without circus. Rebel without cause. Cookie nor milk. This is chicken soup nor noodles. You lost me. I couldn't perform in Moscow Circus anymore because... Smile wasn't big enough, they say. Nobody liked the sad, fat clown, they say. Get rid of him, they say. How do you think the sad, fat clown felt then? Sad and fat, I'm guessing? One hundred percent right! I came to Siberia to freeze myself to death. What happened? I dressed too warmly. got something that I think will really help you. Oleg, Oleg Karskov. Mr. Karskov, this here is a newfangled item called a smile supporter. It could be of great help to a clown in your sad state. Am I smiling right now? Am I? Am I smiling right now? <laughs> this feels really funny, but I think I am smiling right now! I'm in great pain, but oh, I'm happy! Truly happy! Smiling like real clown again! I can do anything real clown can do! Except walking. I'm glad to have been able to help. Let me know if I can ever repay you. I'll do anything except walk. I can't do that right now. You look like a fish out of water. This is my first time in Siberia. Funny, I don't remember asking. I have never seen such unbridled love of a condiment. Should I tell him? Nah, why spoil it? Should I tell him? Nah, why spoil it? Well, now there's something I like to see. An elderly woman sitting in the freezing cold, hacking apart her disgusting yellow toenails. Warms the cockles of my heart. Watch your filthy mouth! Yes, it! Yes, it! Come home, yes, it! Come home! Eh, should have named him Snoopy. Named who, Snoopy? My missing reindeer, Yazit! Yazit! Quiet! Grandma Tonga, I can't hear the TV! Hello! I am trying to get a little shut eye here. I am in hibernation, yet I can't get to sleep. Do not disturb me, comprende? No moleste, senor! That is food supply hut. We built it nice and high so the bears would not get to it. Say, there must be plenty of reindeer around these parts. Why don't you just replace Yazit? Yazit is not just any reindeer, you imp. He was the chosen one. He got to sleep in the tent by the fire. He was never burdened with hard work. 
These toenails look strangely aerodynamic. Say, Grandma, how do you catch a reindeer anyway? Practice! And I'm not your grandma! And, uh, how do you get to Carnegie Hall, Grandma? Salt! I thought so. So, if my hunch is right, and there is some sense to Grandma's drivel... It's not dribble! Then you need salt to catch a reindeer. She just got her punchlines wrong. Salt lick? Wow, that was disgusting. That is biggest salt lick I have ever seen in my hundred years on Earth. Where in the world is this from, Carmen? Israel, and I am so tired of being compared to that woman. The name's Pink. This is going to do it! This is going to lure Yazid back! Yes, it. I knew you'd come back. Ah, oh, I'm glad to see everything worked out all right. I'll just put Yasit down for his nap. <laughs> Pretty sprightly for a 100-year-old gal. What is this thing? Meteorite chunk, presumably. I landed here on June 30th in 1908. Didn't mean to, but I did. See, I was just streaking across the sky, fiery as can be, when the comet or asteroid or whatever the heck I was traveling with exploded and landed me here. Took out 1,200 square miles of forest that June day. Oh, I didn't mean to, but I did. Caused some damage to the Earth's ozone layer, too. I didn't mean to. But you did. Yup, maybe you can make it up to us by proving to be a really useful inventory item in this game. Aw, uh, it's the least I can do. That was quite a quake. Nothing like a little rat rumbler to get you back on your toes. Toes? Toes? Rat rumbler? Haven't you ever heard all the Vinky folklore? We believe that it is giant rats living underground that cause the earthquakes. Freezer brain. The rats exist. Believe me. Oh, see now, I had heard this nonsense about earthquakes being caused by the rupture and rebounding of rocks in the Earth's plates. But this whole giant rat theory makes a lot more sense. When you stumble upon such a giant rat, I will try to refrain from saying, I told you so. Thanks in advance. It's so darn dark, I can't see anything. I'm not moving. I think it was English poet John Milton that said, To be blind is not miserable. Not to be able to bear blindness, that is miserable. Sadly, I am one of those who cannot bear it. Turn on the lights! <laughs> Hey! Hey, it looks like a page from my book of knowledge!
I didn't say anything. I'm trying to reach something very small lodged in this cave's wall. What is it? I don't know. Then why do you want it? Because I want to be an archaeologist someday. This could be my first great find. What makes you think so? It was just east of here that the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, in Jordan. Oh, darn, I can't reach. Maybe these will help. Thanks. Yes! Yes! I got it! What is it? I don't know! <laughs> Eli's pustule popper. I don't know how to use that thing. Hey, Eli, you'll hurt your eyes out there. Try wearing these. Ah, you are a menace to the sea, but now you do right by me. Thank you for the sunglasses. It's the least you can do. What Eli's pustules don't know won't hurt him. Whoops! I must have gotten too much sun, I'm delirious! Thanks for getting rid of the water! Now I can walk home! Allow me to express my gratitude. That one's all yours, bub. Wow, that thing is huge! Yeah, it weighs about three pounds. If anyone ever asks you, who's the biggest, baddest bird? Ah, don't forget to tell us. That's great for me, you heard.
That's quite a swing you've got. Well, I only wanted to try to tune in my favorite show, Blarney. It's about a big page colored walrus that sings little rhymes to children. And it all seems fun and innocent at first, but then he slowly brainwashes them to act aggressively and beg their parents for sugared foods. I can't miss it! I want candy! I don't let anyone touch those. Nothing like a little warm milk. Are you going back out there to help me? Aw, oh, thanks. A freshly fallen mound. Hey, look! Snow Panther! There was a time in my life when I would have gotten in trouble for that. Are you going back out there to help me? Aw, thanks. I always wanted a twin brother. I'll call him Nip. Stay frozen in one position long enough for that kid to get her dose of Blarney? Thank you, Pink Panther! I am with Blarney. He is 
is speaking to me clearly now. I love you, Blarney. Her thighs with Jane Fondue sounds excellent. Unless you go away, make time for Blarney. like the little earthquake drudged my mammoth up to the surface. I hate to root for natural disaster, but a slightly bigger earthquake would set him free. That turned out to be a pretty handy toe. course. Only rodents past this point, Bobby. But I'm a huge fan of the rodent. Then are! Suppose you wouldn't mind answering a few questions, matey. If it's true your friend not for, then this answer you're sure to know. Who was the true carrier of the Black Death Plague? That's right! Let's try again. If to rat you are true blue, which one of these things can a rat just not do? Sadly enough, this one we can't do! Us rats live one year, then... Kaputi! We're through! Chinese astrology holds the rat dear. If you're year of the rat, which is your birth year? That's right, my friend. In fact, they all are. Those born in the year of the rat will go far. Arg! I guess you're okay. Let him in, Ron. Welcome to the rat house. Looks like you're running some kind of a frat house down here. Get it? Frat? Oh, I get it. Oh, that's funny. Do you get it? I get it. I'm just not amused. Somebody's been working out. Negative. Well, then how'd you get so big? All of you. You're the hugest rats I've ever seen. Ain't you heard? The Sapiens used to test their nukes underground here with no regard for the subterranean dwellers. Now look! Ferocious fighters, those sapiens. The very best, or the very worst, depending on how you look at it. I think it was Lord Lewis Mountbatten that said, If the Third World War is fought with nuclear weapons, the Fourth will be fought with bows and arrows. The tremor you felt was caused by our king of oversizing, which reminds me, I'm hungry. Why do you keep wiping that bar? It must be clean by now. Come on, cheese for brains. Solve a riddle, win a sandwich. 
it's not as hard as it looks. I'd like to play. You? Okay, I got a good one for you. What saves human lives but is not man's friend? Been around for all time and will thrive till the end. It makes farmers cry, yet this pest cannot fly. A gorgeous coat I must concur, though never killed for its fur. Here's one thing I bet you didn't know about rats. We make a sensational rat voice sandwich. Don't sniff for food, we're arm sniffing for food. You hear me? Up there lives the king. Great guy. I entirely disagree. The rat's an imbecile. Self-serving, pompous, always working out, making the whole earth shake. I find it very annoying.
Your Highness. Give me ten more and we'll call it a day. Ten more what? Squad thrusts! I just finished my workout a little while ago. You might have felt it up at the Cyphus. I think we did. It felt like an earthquake. Yes, well, I work out very hard. No doubt. Is there any way you could cause an even bigger earthquake? I'm asking for a reason. See, I... There's only one way, and it would never happen not in a jillion years. I've been trying to get my fellas on the health kick for ten months now, and it's no use. They don't realize they're killing themselves out there. Have you ever seen such a revolting display of hedonism? The rat only lives for one year, you know. Well, Mother Nature is a complex gentlewoman. There must be some reason. Sure there's a reason. We got joked! I have in my mind's library an old Indian proverb that may be of some small comfort. It is better to sit down than to stand. It is better to lie down than to sit. But death is best of all. I relate more to the severely troubled Woody Allen who said, I don't want to achieve immortality through my work, I want to achieve it through not dying. Point taken. So, you think the whole working out thing is going to prolong your life expectancy? I know it will. You help me get the rats active and healthy, and you'll get your earthquake, I guarantee it. A projector. This sounds good. This is very good. Thanks for the quake, King. This is very good. And three and four. Let's keep rocking and you don't stop. I love the way we do the hip hop. And one, and two, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just get your body off the floor. That's right. Work it out. Shake it. Don't break it. It took your mom and dad a long time to make it. And two, and three, and four. <laughs> Keep rocking and you don't stop. I love the way we do the hip hop. And one, and two, and one, two, three, four. This could cause an explosive reaction. Kids, please don't try this at home. We are going to be taking a little trip. So I guess it's a good thing you brought your trunk. Hello! Hate to toot my own flute, but I am ex-circus performer who happens to owe you a favor. I'd be glad to help. Thanks, Oleg. You are a lifesaver. <laughs> Very impressive. Oh!
I come bearing ingredients. Great! Where are they? To make an immortal mermaid, I needed to find the only thing living in the saltiest sea. Is that everything? What else do we need? Never know when a black belt will come in handy. Ow! Oh, I'm shaking golden pipes. Good to meet you. Every time I see a new face, I can't help but greet you. Are you of any relation to Shoopy Golden Pipes? I'm his biggest fan. I have all his records. Uh, Shoopy is my stepdad. I I'm Shaky here, his son. My record just came out, and I'm sure that I'll sell some. No doubt. No doubt. So. I guess that makes you the stepson of soul. Ha <laughs> ha, that's right. Say it two times. Stepson of soul, stepson of soul. Say it once more. I can't. I have stuff to do. Hello, I'm Saltina Cracker Barrel, heiress to the Saltina Cracker fortune. Therefore, I'm very rich. Who is that stunning creature with the longish gown? Who? You mean... That must be Saltina Cracker Barrel! Heiress to the Saltina Cracker Fortune. Mark my words, that girl's about to have a loose liver on her hands. Hello! Are you using your whiskers? Uh, yes, why? I am Golden Mall's top plastic surgeon, Dr. Imeki Yunu. This is my wife, Himeki Yunu. She is constructed entirely out of excess body parts my patients leave behind. Everyone in Golden Malls has contributed to her fabrication. I thought you might like her to wear your whiskers. Very exciting evening. More exciting than you know. I don't really fit in here. That's not such a bad thing. I've been trying to get into high society since the day I was born. But my name said it all. Midge Poor Penny. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Poor Penny. So, how did you wind up here anyway? Haven't you heard? I'm Midge Poor Penny. I'm the lotto winner. I'm a zillionaire. But money doesn't change everything. This crowd still doesn't accept me. That's why I want to purchase the whole entire Stars Bite collection. Then they'll know my taste is as good as theirs. Sounds like a prudent plan. Enough talking, talking. Want to buy precious teeth and leave? Perhaps I should go check on the children. No, they're busy. I mean, fine. I come bearing ingredients. Great! Where are they? What exactly is that thing? To make a magic princess, you'll need a princely laugh. 
specifically the hugest one that has a chilly past. And? The hugest one? A mammoth? A chilly past? I found him frozen in a block of ice in Siberia. What about the princely laugh? I'm hoping. You know any good jokes? What did the Pink Panther say when he stepped on an ant? Nathan, maybe you shouldn't. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. <laughs> it was funny when it first came out. I can't believe you two. I'm trapped in a nasty wombat body and the only thing the two of you can think to do is tell dumb Pink Panther jokes. Ugh! <laughs> <laughs> Did that sound princely? I think it was princely. Now we're getting somewhere. We can't complete the potion without the ninja ingredient. But couldn't just sign her up for martial arts classes, huh? I want ninja skills! You'd better find something. <laughs> I'm betting this black belt will arm our little princess-to-be with the ability to injure grown men. Give it a try. Oh my gosh. Squeegee school and batter. Princess Bacoy not skinny, not fatter. Mermaid no living. Wombat retractor. Skivvy bow biscuit bar. Magic half faster. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're... you're... Starving, famished. I've the appetite of an overgrown puma. <coughs> Delectable aperitif. No! <coughs> ah! Oh, good. She's napping. Napping? Napping? Are you nuts? She just ate my cursed poison apple. It's supposed to be deadly. I don't know what's going to happen to her now. Oh, this isn't my day. This is not my day. Do you hear me? Look on the bright side. There's always... Uh, you're pretty much right. This isn't your day. What are we going to do now? Oh, come on. Isn't Poison Sleeping Princess pretty much one of the standards? I mean, any magician worth his own salt must know how to undo this one. Of course I know how to undo this one. I never said I didn't know how to undo this one. This one, incidentally, is uh, no problem at all. Well, that's a huge relief, Nato. So go on, fix her up. And, uh... Unjinx the rest of my book of knowledge while you're at it. Yes, uh, I can undo the spell. However, I'm afraid I can't do that just yet. You see, I still need the magic ingredients necessary to rouse the slumbering princess. Immortal magical ninja princess mermaid. I see, and what ingredients might those be? A very good question, with a very simple answer. Well, let's have it. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, to rouse a poisoned princess, there's two main things you'll need. <laughs> The carrier of the human soul and a redhead's woeful plea. The carrier of the human soul and a redhead's woeful plea? Oh, brother. Tut tut, Pink Panther. The girl's life hangs in the balance. Is your voice changing? I guess puberty is coming earlier these days. Glad I could be here to share. I hand-baked these desserts myself three months in advance. They may be a little hard by now, but not to worry. If you chip a tooth, I know a sensational dentist. <laughs> 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 A cookie a day keeps the doctor away. All the good things from Greece rolled into a salad.
Now I'm a somewhat adventurous eater. Of most things, I'll try a smidgen. But mark my words, good people, I will not eat this old pigeon. I'm a vegetarian. I'll just drink the water. Very well, but it's beef water, dear. It was just a joke, Midge. Tell her. The very wealthy do that, Mrs. Azumi. You'll catch on. <laughs> I talk stupid talk. I eat disgusting bird. When, oh when, will I get to see precious teeth? Someday I'll learn to enjoy the vile delicacies upon which the financially superior feast. I'm watching her girlish figure. Now flip. You won't get your pigeon until you finish your liver. Yes, you're the only one still on appetizers, Flip. Step it up a bit. I'm just savoring every last bite. I'd sooner drink llama bean juice than eat some poor thing's liver. It's barbaric. Great! This is another page from my Book of Knowledge! Just a few moments, we'll climb into the basket and turn the burners on high. We will then slowly drift into the sky, where we will begin our journey over the Masai Mara National Reserve toward Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria is the world's second largest freshwater lake. It is second only to Lake Superior, which, needless to say, is superior. Oh, foo! We lost the lever that turns a burner on. I need something to replace it. No, no, this is not good news, folks. Oh, no. It looks like the beak of a bird. How sad. I am the lion, the king of beasts. Us lions travel in prides with sometimes as many as 37 lions. The females never leave the pride. They're much smaller and they hunt in groups. In general, they are far less independent than males. Leo, dinner, now. Coming, dear heart. The elephant is the largest living land mammal. Did you know that? Did you? We're a highly intelligent sort, which has gotten us nowhere, really. Only led to our being widely used in circuses. Sadly, we are an endangered species. Some humans are so fond of our ivory tusks that they feel the need to hunt and kill us for them. It's illegal, but poachers still continue to do it. Quirky creatures, those humans. I'm a rhinoceros, a strict vegetarian, believe it or not. Did you know three out of the five species of rhinos are now nearing extinction? Humans like to hunt us for our horns, which they believe have all sorts of magical powers. You can imagine how irritating we find this. 
The giraffe is the tallest animal in the world, sometimes growing to 18 feet. With a neck this long, you must be wondering about my tongue. <laughs> it's a foot and a half long, dearie. Read it and weep. <laughs> I'm a hyena! Not the most likable fella you're gonna meet out here! <laughs> I'll eat anything dead, <laughs> alive, <laughs> unattended babies, what have you! <laughs> Hi there! I'm a cheetah! An endangered species, as it were. Cheetahs are the fastest living land animal on the planet! I can run about 68 miles an hour without breaking a sweat. See ya! Welcome to the Maasai Mara National Reserve, straddling Kenya and Tanzania. Here you can witness the annual wildebeest migration. Every year, about a million of us storm into the reserve here during the dry season. Many of us will become food for the lions and hyenas. But such is life. Pink, pink panther? Is that you? I don't believe it! Look at this guy! Hey, fellas, come meet my cousin! Looking good, looking good. I don't believe it! Big Hollywood star! Out here in the middle of the jungle! <laughs> Look at you, all pink! Still got your roar? Eh? Oh, I don't know. It's been a while. I bet you don't have much use for it on your fancy TV show or your fancy pants interactive CD-ROM games. I love your work, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Come on! For all time's sake, get primeval for us, eh? Well, maybe just one little one. He still got it! <laughs> I'm a zebra. I'm an herbivore. I eat plants. But that doesn't stop the carnivorous animals from trying to eat me. Luckily, my stripes confuse predators when they're running after me. A giving tree. thought I'd drop in. Are you the god of wind? No. Then we're not interested. I'm praying for wind to help us sail, or food to help feed us, or else maybe dancing priests to help distract us. That's an odd request. Didn't you meet any bises ashore? Their presence is important at many events. To ensure fertility, they dance themselves into delirium, often inflicting injury to show how entranced they are. Funny, where I'm from, to ensure fertility, we just use manure. You aren't by any chance the carriers of the human soul. Nope. We're the boogies. The fierce boogies. Gypsy sea traders and navigators of even the most ferocious monsoon. Needless to say, it takes a little wind to make a good monsoon. Boogies, huh? When I was little, I used to hear stories about boogies. Boogie men. That's us. But the boogie men were supposed to be horrible. Why would that be based on you, boogies? May I call you boogies? Is that politically correct? Our forefathers were ferocious pirates who looted goods and cargo, doing away with anyone who stood in their way. Oh, well, that makes sense then. Several months ago, a neighboring boogies tribe much like this one attacked a boat for goods, killed everyone aboard. That wasn't very nice of the neighboring boogies tribe. Yes, well, in retrospect, they're sorry. That is the tail and fin of a great shark. Why in the world would anyone cut off the fins and tail of a shark? The answer is quite simple. Money. Money? It just seems so cruel. We got a lot of money for such items.
this pot looks kind of empty. These boogies must be hungry. a dying shark. Perhaps my sorrow would not be as great if my entire sharkhood were on man's dinner plate. But to wound a great shark, not for meat, not for skins, but for only an item as small as his fins. It dishonors the code which the food chain hath writ. If only I had strength, sure, I'd pitch a huge fit. How tragic. Great shark? I promise I'll get your fins back for you, or my name isn't Pink Panther. Much obliged, Pink Panther. Hi, I'm a banded sea snake. I have enough venom in my body to knock out 70 grown men. I'm the most poisonous snake in the world. Ha ha ha! Yikes, that moray eel looks hungry. Those sharp teeth are frightening. Maybe I should offer him a delicious snack food so he won't snack on me. What you got? Uh, baked goods? Sounds scrumptedlyicious. Hey, I lost a tooth! Sorry, Charlie. Do you know how expensive dental work is down here underwater? Never know when a barnacle will come in handy. <laughs> Say, you boogies, I think there's enough here for everyone. Lucky for you. Barnacles would make a great soup when you haven't eaten. Delicious! Best barnacles I ever tasted! And now that the soup is ready and the barnacles are nice and warm, maybe they won't notice if I pocket some shark fins. Delicious! Never know when a burlap sack will come in handy. There's an old Irish proverb that says, There's hope from the sea, but none from the grave. Hope this venomous snake won't chomp a pink knave. Just as you'd promised, I am an able shark again, free to devour sea creatures whole and play my vital role in the food chain. It's my job, you know. Perhaps I'll become a vegan. You know, one of those people who won't eat dairy. Or maybe you can help me now. I'm stuck on that sailboat and there's no wind. Perhaps you could give me a lift? I'm a changed fish with a big heart. I'll be glad to help you. As you wish. To the jungle! 
Tales of Borneo. Tiny Tarsier, I'm a nocturnal prosimian with big old eyes that I can't move around. But not to worry, I can swivel my head 180 degrees so I see everything that's coming or going. Are you the carrier of the human soul? No, I'm a tiny Tarsier. Are you listening or what? I'm an orangutan, an anthropoid. The orangutan is an endangered species. There are only 5,000 of us left living in the wild. Orangutan means man of the jungle. I don't suppose you're the... Never mind. I think there are birds sealed in that tree. Something must have happened to the husband. He's not been back to the tree. We have been pushing food to them through the crack when they let us, but the hornbill must break open the nest for itself from the inside. They've not seen his beak pushing through the hole, so they are afraid to come out. Maybe if I wiggle this hornbill at them, they'll think it's the husband bird and come out. Amazing! Spiritual! We would like very much to commemorate this event with a tattoo. I have the roots needed to make the stain. Now we just need something sharp to hook to a stick. It's too high, I can't reach. An eel's tooth, perfect! as a token of our appreciation. Thanks. We must continue our wandering. You better catch up. It looks like they're leaving. I am too weak to walk. I am starving. It has been days since I've eaten. My stomach doesn't tolerate fruit. Here, Hornbill. Here, little carrier of the human soul. I'm not gonna hurt ya. <coughs> Try nesting in here, why don't ya? To Dragon Island! As you wish. my book of knowledge. You better get out of here. Save yourself, you hear me? Unless you want to get eaten by one of those disgusting dragons. I hate dragons. The sign says all the dragons are that way. Only the ones who are looking for a handout from the tourists. The dragons roam free all over this island. Uh, it's a tourist trap. <laughs> Oh no, it's over. Kitens for me. You'll never get this ham sandwich. Little pig, little pig. Let me live. Not by the toxic saliva on my flickering yellow tongue. Thank you. 
What are you doing? I'm getting ready to have a ham sandwich, you fool. Now get lost. You know, the tourists are giving out dead goats over there just because they want to watch us feed. Sure is a lot easier than chasing around some nervous ham sandwich. I am not like you domesticated sellouts. I am a fierce female dragon capable of laying 30 eggs in one sitting. <laughs> Enjoy the hunt of my prey, and in case you forgot, Komodo dragons are also cannibals. Now scram before I devour you. Now, where was I? Snake! Poisonous snake! Run! Run away! Run away! Retreat! Was it something I said? That was a close call. Thanks a lot. Here, allow me to say thanks. What's this? What do you think? It's the coveted ham sandwich. Wow. Thanks a lot. Hey, it's no skin off my back. I thought it was... Never mind.
job, friend. Here, take this for your troubles. Cheers. Oh, I'm only a cartoon character. I don't. Say, Flip, I'll trade you a bottle of this imported bubbly for your liver. Liver? You want my liver? Not your liver, your loose liver. Your spare. Oh, right. You've got a deal. of Borneo! Would you be interested in a ham? That really hit the spot. Bye bye. Are you from the missionary? Enough is enough! All the world said if the Maasai did not assimilate, they would surely become extinct! The Maasai are highly adaptable, just not to your ways. When need be, we stop herding to hunt. 
When need be, we stop hunting to plant. We support our communities and help each through emutai. Emutai? Emutai means the time of disasters. And my people have seen many, but none like the period in the 19th century, where drought, famine, and smallpox plagued our people. Rinderpest and bovine pleru pneumonia devastated our cattle. The Maasai survived, despite it all, and continue to thrive today. So long as we have our cattle, all must be well. How is it that the Maasai have such a serious collection of cattle? It seems like every Maasai herds cattle. How did that come to be? Let them tell you! Sing it, guys! The first Maasai was a man they called Masinta And God spoke unto Masinta And said he'd send him down some cows Send him some cows God told Masinta Build a cattle enclosure That's the thing we call a crowd There'll be cattle on the ground The first Maasai Was a man they called Masinta And God spoke unto Masinta And said he'd send him down some cows Send him some cows Masinta thanked God in advance and asked him what in return he'd seek. And God told Masinta, Hey, it's on the house. But God also warned Masinta of one other thing. He said, Don't make a sound or a peek. Cattle stream down right from the sky. It was the strangest thing to see. A nearby hunter let loose a big cry. Masinta thought, I hope God don't think that was me. But he did. Now the myth is not the only reason Masai herd cattle. It makes sense ecologically too. For moving around, seeking water and fresh food keeps nomad people healthy too. Masinta. I am a man today, fully initiated into manhood. That is why my head is shaved and dipped in red ochre. Soon I will be able to marry. Congratulations in advance. Today should be a joyful day, but my cattle are thirsty and I must lead them to water. They are very hungry and I must lead them to pasture. But my wife has just had a baby, and that should be celebrated with blood and meat. But I cannot inflict such needs on my weakened cattle. Surely one of my neighbors would donate a bull to slaughter. But everyone is off in more fertile lands. Why not serve up a goat or a sheep? Those animals are eaten every day. On the day of the precious birth, a sacred cattle should be eaten. Or even a part of a sacred cattle. Maybe you could donate something. Maybe I can find something. Is this liver from a steer? Thank you. Now I can celebrate my child's birth without weakening my cattle. Soon we will leave to better pastures. Hey, honey, the pink panther brought us a big hunk of liver. He is so thoughtful. Thank you again. I saw what a nice thing you did. So why do you look so sad? A very young girl has fallen ill. 
She can't wake up. This is a terrible tragedy. Children are the bright moon. May I suggest a chant? Olapa, Oibor, Inkera. What does it mean? Children are the bright moon. Oh. Perhaps if you plead these words to the red god, he will show mercy. You see, there are two gods, the black god and the red god. The red god is malicious and the black god is good. The black god lives close to man and the red god lives above him. You're a redhead in a sense. You just taught me a plea, sort of. What was it again? Well, it's not really a plea. It's more of an old Maasai proverb. Trust me, by the time I get done with it, it'll be a plea. What was it? Olapa Oibor Inkera. Olapa Oibor Inkera. Olapa Oibor Inkera. Thanks, you've helped more than you know. Panther, we need to wake Violet. A feather from the Soul Carrier, for good measure. Ahem. My instructions also called for a redhead's woeful plea. I got that woeful chant from a redhead, literally. Well, keep chanting, and you, keep dancing. Why isn't this working? Don't you have to say some magic spell or something? Wally sicky some girls, welly wickled others, cast the magic boopsie bop, open up them shutters! It, it, it's hard to explain. All the while I felt like there was some mysterious and magical force helping me along. I'm on my own and I can't make the magic happen. You've got to keep trying, Nathan. For Violet's sake. I can't. I'm no good. <laughs> I don't think the potion's potency is perfect, partner. I might need some vegetables to make this a complete, well-balanced spell. I don't think the potion's potency is perfect, partner. I might need some vegetables to make this a complete, well-balanced spell. You handsome devil! Looks like mom's cooking. Yuck! <laughs> Hi, Violet. Enjoy your nap? Hang in there, little buddy. It won't be long now. Okay, Skipper.
I can explain everything. Explain what, dear heart? Didn't she... Don't you... Didn't she... Don't you what, kitten? Never mind. As you were. And now, the moment you have all been waiting for. Without any further ado, may I present... The Star's Bite Collection. Ah! I want to buy the whole thing. How much? That's not fair. He can't buy the whole thing. Some of us want to purchase individual teeth. Too bad. I have a lot of money, and I want them all. Ladies and gentlemen, let's keep our wits about us. I'm certain we can reach an arrangement that benefits me exclusively. Oh my, she's ruined the ambiance. Violet, is that you? We don't usually allow her to belch or levitate above the room, or get possessed as she seems to be. What in the world is that thing? And how much do you want for it? I don't think it's for sale, is it, darling? Sure it is, Muffin. Sure it is. That thing is your daughter, Mr. Izumi. Is she having an asthma attack? This is the strangest party I have ever been to. Word to your mother. Can I have your attention, please? <laughs> I'm the evil spirit of Echidna. I now possess Violet. Hi, Echidna. 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 Hi. Now, I don't want to be here any more than you want me to be here. Apparently, someone was tampering with the mysterious forces of the unknown, and the next thing I know, I'm trapped in the body of an overweight toddler. Not overweight, just big bone. Whatever. Now, in order to exorcise my spirit, you'll need to contact the most powerful man in the universe. But how are we going to get Steven Spielberger on such short notice? Who says it's Spielberger? I think it's Pat Swoon. That man is unstoppable. I think she means Zeus. Zeus? Echidna was a dreaded monster from Greek mythology, with the upper body of a woman and lower body of a gruesome serpent. Since, as you just proved, power is subjective and our subject to the spirit of a mythical creature from fabled Greece, it stands to reason that from Echidna's point of view, Zeus is the most powerful man in the universe, Zeus being the king of all gods. <laughs> But I could be wrong. Then I have to go back to that fabled time of Mount Olympus, when Greek gods did max and relax on the highest mountain in Greece. I suppose I'll be needing this. I suppose I'll be needing this too. Never can tell when you'll need to say cheese. missing page. So, he pulls his chariot right out, without looking, and he cuts me off in the middle of traffic. I'm the god of wine in altered states, and I'm telling you, if he wasn't... Sorry, Zeus, but I speak the truth. I'd like to have a word with Zeus. How do I reach him? You don't reach him. He reaches you. That's the way it goes when you're the king of the gods. Hi, I'm Aphrodite, goddess of love. 
Hey, man, I'm Ares, god of war. And let me tell you, the family feud is just getting started. Between my temperamental dad, Zeus, and my vengeful uncle, Poseidon, and my stubborn half-sister, Athena, by the time this family spat is worked out, there will be nothing left of Mount Olympus. Well, look who washed up. How's it going, Poseidon? Is there any news on Echidna? Not since Zeus swallowed Athena again! It is for the best. That ornery woman will bring trouble to all. Maybe I'm just being dense, but if Athena is responsible for Echidna's disappearance, how is she going to be able to help you from the pit of Zeus's stomach? Silence! Did you say Echidna? Yes, Echidna is my granddaughter. She has the head of a beautiful nymph, but the body of a serpent. Zeus spared her and her children's lives as challenges to future heroes. She is missing. Do you have any information on her? Uh, let's suppose that someone accidentally cast a spell that made her disappear. It would be just like Athena to do something like that. How could we reverse it? I suppose only Athena herself would know the answer. So, if I ask her nicely... <laughs> <laughs> Silence! Not Poseidon, he's always storming off. He and Athena have been quarreling for years. He's too stubborn to ask her nicely for help. Well, I'm not. If I could just speak to Athena, I'm sure I could convince her. Good luck. As you heard before, Zeus swallowed her whole. Now she's stuck in his head. There must be some way I can attract Zeus's attention. I may be in hot water with Poseidon. This trident could come in handy. That's Pegasus, the winged horse. My mother left as I arrived She would only be missed by me With a pair of snakes and a stony gaze Medusa, you finally free My father blessed with sons and daughters And of course, stormy scene and it took me years to understand There were never any others like me When horses fly When dreamers die When wells run dry I can't help try Poseidon wonders why Medusa says goodbye Who wants to have a try And ride a horse that flies Athena catch Pegasus Or was the one and only horse with wings Men who would be heroes Would use me to accomplish great things And be careful when you bridle greatness For it's always likely you'll get thrown Especially if you misuse greatness And try to play me I cry Poseidon wonders why Medusa said goodbye I've had my mother die Yet somehow still I fly From the mark sprung a 
dating I would trade my wings I fly To know that I'm really real You can keep me alive In your storybooks By imagining how Hard it feels To when horses fly When dreamers sigh When wells run dry I can't help try Poseidon wonders why We do so sad goodbye I've had my mother die Yet somehow still I fly When dreamers sigh When horses Smells divine. Do you have any idea how much easier that wonderful fragrance would make my job? Spray it on me, please. I'll let you have the whole bottle if you help me attract Zeus. You spray that on me, and Zeus will be here before you can say... Divinity? Whatever. Oh, Zeus. Something smells divine. The purest fume I ever did with. That's funny. For as good as it smells, the bottle said it's just water that came from a toilet. I don't have time for your games, Aphrodite. I've got a splitting headache over here. Maybe you ate something that didn't agree with you. Enough of the funny business, Dionysus. You're on my last nerve over here. I would have thought you'd learned your lesson, Daddy. Thank you, Pink God of Headaches. Not a problem. Wrong. She is a problem. She has done some sort of trickery with her cousin Echidna. I told you, I didn't do anything with that... that... half-woman, half-serpent beast. Then who is responsible for the disappearance? Which of you dare dabble in the field of fire and found yourself burned a fiery shade of pink? Was it you, God of Headaches? It was all a terrible mishap. You see, there was this cauldron and a little boy in trouble, and a big hairy girl and some leftover Greek salad. And the next thing I knew, Echidna was stuck in Violet, and Violet is... who knows where. You are responsible for the disappearance of Echidna? You, God of Headaches? This is not good. Your fate will be decided by the completion of two really difficult, nearly impossible tasks. You must succeed in both to win your life. But... but... There are no buts on Mount Olympus. Doesn't that make sitting uncomfortable? Let the challenge begin. Uh, hold on, don't I get someone to help me train for this event? I suppose. Who is this? Apollo. Who else? How you doing? Uh, been better. Hey, we gotta get you into shape. Let us begin. The first task will be similar to a task my son Perseus was victorious in. You must slay the two remaining Gorgons. Perseus beheaded Medusa with the aid of Athena and Hermes. 
Now you must put the remaining two Gorgons out of commission, yet spill no blood. Capiche? But beware, for their gaze alone can turn you to stone. Bring proof of your victory, but do not slay them. Uh, how do I get there? Why don't you take Pegasus, the winged horse? It sprang forth from Medusa when her head was cut off by Perseus. I'm sure he remembers the way to the Gorgons. No sweat, I'll be back in a flash. Meanwhile, don't get your sheets in a bunch. Thanks for the ride, Pegasus! Duh, I am Uriel. Duh, I am Steno. We, we are, are the, the remaining, remaining Gorgons. Gorgons! Turn around, Turn around so, so we, we can, can see, see ya! Must not look at snakeheads! <laughs> Who ordered the Greek salad? Food, glorious food. Do you know what it's like living in this swamp? We can't even get a pizza delivered. Oh, I'm turning to stone. <laughs> That's what you get for being greedy. Let that be a lesson to all you kids out there. Excuse me, uh, miss, I believe you have a little something stuck in your teeth. You might want to, uh... This is called a photograph. Say it with me. Photograph. It captures the image of... Let me see that thing. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's amazing, isn't it? So lifelike and... Well, let's see how you fare in the brains competition. I hope you've been brushing up on your Greek mythology. In this corner, weighing in at approximately 343 pounds, about half of which is water retention, is the mighty and vengeful Poseidon, god of the sea! In this corner, weighing in at... About 98 pounds. About 98 pounds is the pink, swim or sink, god of headaches! Thanks for your support. Answer the questions posed, or die. Thanks, Dee. I'll take answer the question posed for a hundred. When Athena got word that Medusa I kissed in a temple dedicated to she, she turned Medusa's hair into a frightful wicked scare by transforming her locks into these. So you're lucky this time, but I'll quickly remind. Answer four out of five, or you won't get out alive. Bring it on! It's you, baby! It's all you! When Athens was looking to choose its patron, the choice was Poseidon or me. So, gifts we did make, and the tie would soon break. Which gift was it that came from me? Right! Now, which gift was it that came from he? Though your answer was good, you're not yet out of these woods. You must answer one more to walk free out that door. As you may have well noted, many gods here have doted. 
And if Wed still consorts were present, who fathered all these? The answer's a breeze. This son of Kronos fought in with a vengeance. Who fathered Hermes, Ares, Apollo, and me? Perseus, Dionysus, and the great Heracles. Right again! You fared quite well. I must admit you have exceeded my expectations. Take me to my granddaughter and all is forgot. I would be happy to. We'll take my chariot. Hello, everyone. This is Poseidon. Poseidon, this is everyone. What happened to Zeus? Well, Poseidon is Echidna's grandfather and... Echidna, get down here now! We don't usually allow her to belch, or levitate above the room, or get possessed as she seems to be. I won't tolerate another moment of this nonsense. Echidna, it's time to go home! Well, what are you going to do? What can I do? She won't listen! Bibi Fi, Feely Gook, Gleepy Glaucoma, Violet be Becky now, Nightmare be over! Duck! She's gonna blow! Zeus? Is that you? No! I know it's not Carl Sweathers. No, but good guess. Ah! Ah! Why are we screaming? Because he's scary. He's really scary. Enough! Ah! That was fun! Let's go home. I have a headache. Ah, well, he... Uh, why don't you take two aspirin and call me in the morning? Sure thing. <laughs> oh, terrible dream. Violet, let's go home now. Can we keep him? How much? Uh, it's on the house. Really? You're nothing without celebrity teeth. Do you hear me? Nothing. I thought if I had fancy teeth, people would want to hear me sing. But after all this craziness, I wouldn't touch those things. I think you have a splendid voice, Shaky. That means the world to me coming from you, Saltina. Uh, may I escort you home? Why, thank you. I would like that very much. Wait, what about the teeth? You're nothing without celebrity teeth. Do you hear me? Nothing! Don't be silly. I was never here for the teeth. I was here for the free food. Cheers! And I think I've learned something tonight. If none of these important rich people need these teeth to make them feel rich and important, then by golly, neither do I! Wait, what about the teeth? You're nothing without celebrity teeth. Do you hear me? Nothing! Ah, Himeki! I couldn't have hoped for a better ending. Now you will finally be complete. <laughs> what are you going to do now, Himeki? I'm gonna run for mayor! Nathan Jr., you have done it this time. Do you hear me? You have done it. This is it for you, buddy. The last straw. This time, you're definitely going away to the Young Gums Academy. Do you hear me? I should have sent you years ago. <laughs> All I ever wanted to do was be a magician. Now I failed at that, too. Now, now, Nathan, it's partially my fault. 
You see, I saw promise in you, and I wanted to challenge your skills. So I intervened a bit here and there, stuck my nose where it didn't belong. You did the best you could under the circumstances. Even with your help, I couldn't fix anything. I'm a failure. I know of one thing you did all by yourself that was a complete and total success. A real testimony to your skill as a sorcerer. What? The poison apple. It worked just like you wanted it to, and Strangeblood didn't help you with it at all. Hey, that's true! Nathan, how would you like to study with me? You could be my apprentice. I'll teach you everything I know about magic. What about my parents? I have a feeling they will agree. <laughs> Nathan, good luck with the magic. Goodbye, strange blood. You're neither strange nor blood. Discuss amongst yourselves. It's all back in place. You know, when I took that job as a traveling salesman, I had no idea just how far I'd be traveling. I guess it doesn't matter much where I go. There's always going to be a fantastic adventure. So, let me ask you something. How did you make that poison apple? In due time, strange blood. In due time. <laughs> <laughs>